Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Norfolk, Virginia. And good afternoon, and welcome to Dick Price Stadium in Norfolk for today's broadcast on the NSU and MEAC Digital Network as we welcome in our audience on ESPN3. Today's game features the Spartans of Norfolk State and the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Hello, everyone. I am Ross Gordon, and I'm joined by Wu Bay Gabray. It is the first broadcast on ESPN3. We're glad to have you here with us today as Norfolk State welcomes in FanView for both of their first MEAC openers. Conference play. Norfolk State getting set to take on FanView, and it's a beautiful day for football. Norfolk State coming in with a 1-3 record on the year. FanView with a record of 2-1 and off their big win last week over Southern down at home. Norfolk State again coming off a tough loss at Montana State last week. 56-21 was that final score, and they look to right the ship here today against Florida a and We'll take a timeout, and when we come back, we'll have more as we get set for football, Norfolk State and FAMU on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. This is a minute. Hmm? You, you good? I it's MEAC football season, and things are about to get wild. Could the Aggies bury the Bison? Or will the Bears make a run at the ratings board? Will the Rattlers strike before the Bulldogs bite? Will the Eagles sink their talents into the title or feel the Hornets sting? Could the Wildcats wrap their jaws around victory? Or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. How long we have? I came here to NSU. I was kind of not engaged. Educator. At Norfolk State University, we see the future in you. Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. As we get set for action here, Ross Gordon joined by Wu Bay Gabray. As we get set for action today, Norfolk State and FAMU as we now see the Spartans come out and FAMU come out as we get set. Head coach for Florida and m Willie Simmons, in his second year here as the coach of Florida and m really got things going last year. Wu Bay, and he's a young guy with a lot of energy, and his team really feeds off him. Yeah, Ross, you know, it's Coach Simmons, second year, eight and six at Florida and m He's a fifth year coach, twenty-seven wins in his career. Um, you get, you said one game short of a MEAC title, so he's trying to get this team back to the top again this year. Norfolk State, coached by Latrell Scott in his fifth year as head coach, and he's really trying to get his team to really uh, galvanize as the season has gone along, and they're trying to do their best, and they're doing a solid job here. They just have to keep it all together. You know, this is this is, this is is the real season that Coach Scott was looking for, the MEAC part of the season. He's 16-28 and 28, uh, record here at Norfolk State, but, you know, this is, this is the type of year that he tries to get his group you know, confidence and go into that meat of the schedule later on in the MEAC, uh, tour, MEAC uh, schedule part of the, the year. As the, this, again, will probably be one of the better uh, opportunities to see two of the better quarterbacks in the conference with Ryan Stanley, the quarterback of FAMU, and Jawan Carter of Norfolk State. Carter, again, second in the conference in touchdowns with nine touchdown passes, and Stanley just Mr. Consistent. You know, Stanley having a great year. Carter having a great year as well. Both quarterbacks lead their team in on the offensive side again whatever quarterback plays the best will probably come out victorious today as Norfolk State and FAMU getting set for their first conference a ball game of the year FAMU with their road white jerseys up top with their orange and green bottoms will be moving from left to left to right to left excuse me Norfolk State from left to right wearing their home green jerseys with gold trim Getting set to kick off for Florida a m Shahia Ali, he will tee it up again back deep. Kevin Johnson and Tremaine Talbert. As again, we're getting set for action on the MEAC Digital Network and the NSU Sports Network. We're glad to have you with us on both as Ali gets set to get it away. He puts toe to leather, and we are underway as Kevin Johnson will take it around one yard deep 
in the end zone and he'll return it out Johnson with a head full of steam looking for a hole bounces it outside past the 25 to the 27 before he's brought down by the Rattlers Chris Jerry Jerry makes the tackle and the Spartans offensively led by Jawan Carter will come out for the first time today let's see what the Spartans do on their first possession you talked about Johnson on the return he was he came in as a defensive back and then they finally moved him to running back as he does special teams as well very quick shifty freshman from Suffolk base defense look now for the Rattlers as Carter lines up in the shotgun your tailback's going to be Gerald Hewlett Jr. and we're going to have a flag on the first play and we'll see who's the guilty party here maybe a illegal snap false start offense number 62 five yard penalty first down it was an illegal snap on Dominique Jordan the center the senior out of Chesapeake, Virginia, and that backs the Spartans up, but it's a first down and 15 now from the 21-yard line. Carter, again, with two wide receivers, one split to either side. Play action, drops back to pass with time. Looking over the defense, now floats it in the direction of Justin Smith, and Smith can't came up with it. There's two wide receivers in that formation, and they both went deep. You know, you have to love the pass protection, though, Ross, on that one. Carter had a lot of time in the pocket to get down the field, just nobody got open on that possession. As Malcolm Haney now checks in at wide receiver, two tight ends as well for the Spartans. We'll see Marquis Ellington as well in at wide receiver for Carter with, again, Hewlett to his right as Ellington moves in motion. And the handoff will go to Hewlett, rushing right side, not much doing there, picks up three out to the 24-yard line before he stacked up it will be a third down and 11 maybe 12 for the Spartans huge third down here you want to start off very aggressive very quick let's see what the Spartans dial up here on this third and long as it will be a third and long for Norfolk State Carter will send four wideouts out in the formation two split to either side three down linemen for Florida and m Hewlett stays in at tailback the blitz comes off the edge. Carter with time. Looks down the middle of the field. Has a man wide open. It's the Kendall James. He'll pick up the first down, and he'll get slung backwards, but he'll get slung backwards at the 38-yard line. He was taken down in the middle of the field by Doyle Grimes, the middle linebacker, and that's going to be a matchup problem all day if you have the Kendall James, the fastest wide receiver on the field against the middle linebacker. We talked about James in pregame, Ross. He can play on either side, slot or outside. That time he was in the slot and got a first down for the Spartans. Same formation now, four wide outs in the formation, two split to either side for Carter. Carter, quick play action, kicks it off to James. James makes one man miss, still on his feet. As he bounces it inside, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, and he gets stood up at the line of scrimmage. He did a good job to get one there on the play. It will be a second down and 10, maybe nine for the Spartans at their own 39-yard line. That time James was outside, and you can see the versatility of James. As a receiver, he can do uh, either play either receiver position. As Carter comes back to the line of scrimmage, two wide receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near. That's Johnson in motion, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper as J Carter gets to the 40 before he's slung down there. That's Derek Mayweather on the stop for Florida A&M. That'll bring up a third down and eight for the Spartans. Good fake. You know, that time Mayweather got on the edge and got Carter down. Another third down here for Norfolk State. Spartans one for one on third down thus far. And Carter will have a third down and eight. This time as the Spartans send a bunch formation to the top of the field. Justin Smith to the near side of the field as Carter drops back to pass. Another blitz coming. Pass is going to be complete. Wide open is Ellington. Ellington picks up the first down. Out in to Flam Fanview territory at the 45-yard line. It's another first down. Again, great pass potential from the offensive line, giving Carter plenty of time to look down the field. That time he saw an open receiver for a first down for the Spartans. As the Spartans now come back to the line of scrimmage. And again, the Spartans move in a no huddle in Famu territory for the first time today. Carter with Hewlett to his right. Will hand it off to Hewlett, and Hewlett will rush right. He's hit hard and loses a yard. Nice job coming up, knifing through and making the stop was Doyle Grimes. Grimes, good hit that time on Hewlett. Hewlett with a little cutback, but Grimes is right there for the tackle. And like you said, it was a good hit. 
And that will make it a second down and 11 for the Spartans. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Spam you with three down linemen. Carter looks over the defense, drops back pass. is going to be complete again to James. James makes one man miss, picks up the first down inside the 35 down to the 30. One yard line before he's taken down. Nice job there by James of finding himself open. Troy Hilton makes the stop for the Rattlers. Again, James on the outside. They like moving James around. That time he was the outside receiver. Got a good play call for him, and he gets positive yardage as it gets the first down for the Spartans. Again, Hewitt stays in the backfield for Carter with three wide receivers to the far side. As actually, that's. Johnson in the backfield pass is going to be complete to Justin Smith inside the 20 down to the 15 before he's taken down and again the Spartans moving the ball through the air here today he's now four of actually five of six on the day throwing the football another first down inside the 15 a little RPO that time from Carter saw Smith in the slot he got a nice catch on the slant pattern that time for the Spartans Johnson stays in at tailback Four wide outs for the Spartans, two to either side as Johnson gets a handoff in between the tackles to lose one tackle inside the 10 down to the four yard line. And it will be about a nine yard pickup. He'll be one yard shy of the first down. The freshman again with his first carry, knifes through the defense and picks up eight on first down. That time you saw his agility and his speed as he burst through the line. Had one move, an opportunity, almost got in the end zone that time. Same formation as Pam Mew crowds the line of scrimmage. Carter hands it off to Johnson again. Tries to bounce it outside. He does. He's kind of get to the edge, and he does. And he gets into the end zone for the score. Great play by Johnson to get the outside edge. Use that speed inside the pylon for a touchdown for the Spartans. For Johnson, that's his second rushing touchdown of the year. And the Spartans take the opening kickoff down the field. And with 9.48 left to go in the quarter, number one lead fam you 6 nothing. Just love how Coach Scott said they were fighting over him in preseason. Just to, to try to decide on what side of the ball he was going to be. I know the running back room loves to, ha loves to have him now in the backfield. He's at a good spot at the running back position. He leads the team now in touchdowns as the extra point by Nardone is on the way up and good. 7-0 your score. Norfolk State with the lead over FAMU as we find ourselves with 9.48 left to go in the first quarter. In a 7-0 ball game in favor of Norfolk State. They did a good job of mixing up the pass and the run there, but Jawan Carter was sharp. 5 of 6 throwing the football, 64 yards, as long as it was 20 yards. Absolutely, Ross. The offensive line, you know, they they, they really, you know, showed showed their versatility as well in, in passing and uh, running downs, giving Carter plenty of time and some good holes for the running backs as well. 11 plays, 74 yards taken off of the board for that drive for Norfolk State and a touchdown run for Johnson and the Spartans lead 7-0 as Ryan Richter out to kick off for the Spartans back deep return, return the kick for Florida a and is George Webb a wide receiver for Florida a and also back there is Marcus Williams Williams stands on the right hash Webb on Actually, Webb on the right hash, Williams on the left. No wind blowing right now as Richter sees the ball fall off the tee, and maybe, <laughs> maybe it's a little wind. <laughs> it's a little wind out there. I lied to you, sorry. <laughs> as the Spartans lead seven nothing, and again a solid drive, just taking what the defense gives him. As Richter still trying to tee the ball up here. As again, he's got Webb and Williams back deep to return the kick as Richter gets it away. And he will drive it deep into the end zone. And Williams will take it three yards deep and stop at the goal line. And he will now <laughs> give the football to Ford AM at the 25 yard line. Good kick there by Richter. And Ford AM will come out for their first offensive possession. Right down with 9.48 left to go here in quarter number one. All right, now it's, now it's Stanley's turn see what he can do with the offense for Florida A&M. The defense has to just keep aware of him. He, a great, great passer, one of the best quarterbacks we're going to see in this conference. You just have to try to contain him and make him uncomfortable back there in the pocket. 
So we'll see Florida a &M come out for the first time today. And in the backfield, it will be Bishop Bonnet. The Spartans will crowd the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers for Florida a &M to the top of the formation, one to the near. Stanley in the shotgun. Drops back the pass, looking for Bonnet. Bonnet with a head full of steam, gets out the first down, just slung it out to the outside. He'll pick up the first down at the 36-yard line of Florida a &M. First completion goes for a first down for Ryan Stanley for 11 yards. He saw that speed by Bonnet, gets to the outside. It's a huge game for the Rattlers. As Florida a &M will send two wide receivers now to the near side, one to the far. As the Spartans in their nickel package, again, crowding the line of scrimmage. Stanley in the shotgun, Bonnet to his right. High snap, Bonnet takes it in between the tackles there for Bonnet. He takes a Spartan on a ride there for a pickup of about seven out past the 40 to the 42-yard line. And Tyree Givers-Wilson makes the stop. The linebacker that makes it a second down and four. As again, Stanley will send three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Bonnet stays in the backfield, and he'll get the handoff again, running left side. Picks up the first down and more inside Norfolk State territory, stays on his feet. Avoids a couple tackles inside the 45-yard line. He gets down to the 40 before he's taken down. Another big run there for Bishop Bonnet. That's his second run of the day. Nigel Chavis makes the stop. But FAMU in Norfolk State territory is Bonnet and tries to get outside. And Chris Myers does a good job of stopping him up there as that play just didn't get going. As FAMU tried to move quickly at the line of scrimmage, the Spartans are ready for that, and Myers stops them for no gain. They're definitely up, up tempo now for the Rattlers. If Bonnet's carried or been responsible for every every play so far. As Stanley looking downfield, pass is going to be incomplete. Again, moving quickly was looking for the freshman Xavier Smith playing underneath for Norfolk State and cutting that pass off was Rashard Russell. Nice coverage there by the Spartans. It's going to be a third down and 10 for Florida A&M. Into the backfield now for Florida A&M is Terrell Jennings. They have a host of running backs back there. Jennings, a freshman. And that tail back now. With three wide receivers at the top of the formation as Stanley looks downfield. Pass is going to be complete and for the first down and more. Running inside the 10 and taking Nigel Chavis into the end zone for the score was FAMU's David Manigo. Well, Coach Simmons talked about how much talent that Stanley has around him. That time a simple slant pattern. And the receiver just basically carried two Spartans to the end zone. Ryan Stanley, a 40-yard touchdown pass. <laughs> to make it a 7-6 six, six ball game first. Both teams score in their first possessions of the ball game. As Fadul comes out to, excuse me, Ali comes out to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of Fadul and the Spartans and Rattlers with a lot of offensive explosion here to start the ball game. As the snap is down, the kick is up. It's high enough up and it is through. We're tied at seven here with 8.09 left to go here in Quarter number one, timeout taken on the field. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. <laughs> and welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium. 7-7 seven, seven is your score with 8.09 left to go here in the first quarter. Ali on to kick off as both teams score on their first possession as Kevin Johnson for the second time will return to kick this time from his eight yard line looking over the middle of the field looking for a hole gets one shakes a tackler gets out past the 30 to the 33 yard line before he's brought down and on the stop for Florida a and m was Traquan Butler but the Spartans will have solid field position here at the return by Kevin Johnson every time Johnson gets the ball his hands you think he's going to break it there's no a late flag Ross on the field. And we're going to have another flag. And that's going to go against Coach Scott. We'll see what, what the conversation's about. 
as the referee was close to Coach Scott there and threw the flag. I think there was a question maybe about a late hit, but it looked like two Rattlers ran into each other there, yeah. and that's what it was, but we'll see. said coach Scott maybe with an unsportsmanlike conduct but we'll see what the what the what the call is from the official there are two fouls on the play both on the receiving team unsportsmanlike conduct Norfolk State number 81 this is number 81's first unsportsmanlike McFarland, as well as Latrell Scott get personal fouls there and this drive which would have started around the 36 yard line now moves back to the 10 yard line and the Spartans offense backed up deep in their own territory as we see Aaron Chandler for the excuse me Aaron Savage for the first time in a few weeks after hurting himself last time he was here it's good to see him back on the field as the Spartans go four wide. Carter surveys the defense. As FAMU drops out of the presser and kicks it out to Savage. Savage out past the 10, gets taken down maybe at the 15-yard line to pick up a five on first down. Savage with that brace on his left knee. Good to see him out on the field and getting a touch early in the ball game. Absolutely, great to see him back at home. After, like you said, Ross, having a two, couple games off. Good to see the senior from Baltimore back on the field. Two wideouts in this formation for Carter. One split to either side. The H back is going to be Anthony Williams as the handoff goes to Savage in between the tackles. Savage drags tacklers to the 19-yard line. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down here on third. And the Spartans. Doing a good job of keeping this defense from FAMU off on uh, uh, honest here early in the ball game. Running the ball uh, with some consistency here. 20, 24 yards rushing for FAMU, 19 for the Spartans. Most of the damage, though, for both teams have been done through the air for 69 yards for Norfolk State, 51 for FAMU as the Rattlers crowd the line of scrimmage. Carter wastes a snap, drops back to pass. Looking out in the flat, has a man wide open. It's Anthony Williams. Williams will pick up the first down as he's pushed out of bounds, out past the 25 at the 28-yard line. He's pushed out of bounds by Patrick Bonner. Rush, you're right. You, know, you definitely want to keep them honest, you know, keep them off balance. That time, Williams faked like he was going to block and went out in the flat, caught a pass for Carter for a first down. Clock moving with 6.29 left to go here in the first quarter. We're knotted up at 7. Norfolk State with their second offensive possession of the day. As Savage remains in the backfield. And Carter will play action, hold it. Looking downfield, looking for McElhaney. And he was double covered. Had to get the ball out of his hands as Bam, you was coming on, on him quickly. It'll be a second down now for the Spartans in 10 from their own 29. Yeah, that time Carter threw a little, little bit earlier than he would like. You know, because of the pressure from FAMU, double coverage again in the in the back, and uh, wasn't able to connect that time to McElhaney. McElhaney will come to the sideline as the Spartans send three wide receivers to the far side. Justin Smith, the target to the near side, and Hewlett back in the backfield for Carter. Carter awaits the snap as FAMU shows blitz, and we're going to have a flag thrown, and I believe it's going to be a false start against Norfolk State as Williams jumped just a little bit the tight end. Ball start. Offense, number four. Five-yard penalty, second down. It's second down and 15 now for the Spartans. Already on this possession, three penalties, four for the game. Now for Norfolk State. Here in the first quarter for 35 yards with 6.13 remaining. Carter will keep Hewlett to his left. Send two wide receivers to the far side. The H-back Williams lined up to the far side as well. Carter drops back and hands it off to Hewlett on a delayed handoff. Hewlett bounces it outside, still on his feet before he's taken down at the 25-yard line. A pickup of maybe two out to the 26 before he's brought down. And that'll bring up a third down and long for Norfolk State. Another third down and long for the Spartans. They've had a couple of those in the first possession. 
you know, you know, with Carter going down the field with some pass plays. So definitely passing situation. Let's see what the Sparks dial up here. Carter with Hewitt to his right has a third down and 13 now from the 26-yard line. The yard line to gain is the 39. Two wide receivers to the near side. Fam, you crowding the line of scrimmage, showing blitz as Carter drops back to pass with time. Steps up in the pocket. Pocket's going to be collapsed as James catches it, and he'll be about a yard shy of the first out to the 38-yard line. It'll be a fourth down situation for Norfolk State, and let's see what they decide to do as they give him credit to the 38. And the punting unit will come on to the field for the Spartans. Yep, James has been you know, the hot receiver so far for Carter. Just came up a yard short. And Scott elected to go for bringing the punt team instead of going for it on fourth and short. That's James' fourth reception for 41 yards as Ryan Richter comes out. Back deep is George Webb to return the punt of Richter. As Richter will get the punt away. It's a high spiral that Webb will take at around the 11-yard line. Tries to bounce it outside. And the Spartans there for him is the host of Spartans there. And I don't even think there's – I think, fam, you might have ran to the sideline. It was just Webb against everyone else. And that's the way we'll go to this media timeout. 440 left to go here in quarter number one. We're tied at seven. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. We're knotted up at seven here in the first quarter. 440 left. As Ryan Stanley and Florida and m back on the field for the second time here today. Bishop Bonnet in the backfield with Stanley. As Stanley, play action, looking out in the flat pass. is going to be caught, but out of bounds as the intended receiver was Manigo. He had his hands on it, but he couldn't keep it in bounds. It will be a second down and 10 for the Rattlers at their own 15. You see that time Stanley getting the ball out quick. Not allowing the Spartans to put any pressure on him, but that time it was out of bounds, obviously, on the catch. Bonnet stays in at running back as it should be a false start there. And it will be a false start. The tight end, Kamari Young, move quickly, and that will back Florida and up to the 10. Offense, number 81, five-yard penalty, second down. Break up a second down and 15. That's the first. That's the first penalty on Florida A&M here in the first quarter with 4.36 left to go. Same formation, Bonnet to the left of Stanley in the shotgun. Stanley surveys the defense. And Stanley drops back to pass with time. Pass is going to be complete. And Savage takes down Manigo about two yards shy of the first down. It's a 13-yard pickup for the Rattlers. With 4.30 left to go here in the first quarter. It'll be a third down and two. Bonnet stays in the backfield. Let's see if the Spartans can get a stop here. And Stanley claps his hands. And he drops it back. Pass is going to be complete, but not enough for the first down. Nice job there for the Spartans. As fam, you thought they might have had something because the Spartans were late getting over there. But again, the pass was complete to Xavier Smith. But a nice job of coming up from his safety spot by Nairi Quinnelly and making the stop. And Florida and m will have to punt. Yeah, the Norfolk native with a great instinctive play. We thought the Spartans were a little out of position. They made up for it and got the stop. As fam, you will punt. But Duel, one of the best punters in the country maybe number one here is average kicks it off and Talbert will call a fair catch at the 25 yard line and the Spartans will Media get it timeout. after this timeout we're tied at seven with 332 left to go here in quarter number one we'll be back on the MIAC digital and NSU sports networks welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as Norfolk State and FAMU Tied at seven for the third time. The Norfolk State offense onto the field after the punt. We'll see Jawan Carter back. Drops back to pass. Pass is going to be complete again to the Kendall James. James makes a man miss again. Gets out to the 40-yard line before he's pulled down. Tackle made by Elijah Richardson, the linebacker, and the Spartans finding something again with D.K. James. Yeah, D.K. James again. Looks like he came up a little, looking a little bit. That, that looked like the touchdown pass he caught against Old Dominion for that long play. First down for the Spartans on that catch. Two wideouts in the formation, one split to either side. 
as Carter over 100 yards passing today. Johnson in the backfield. Johnson will get the carry as he goes backside, cuts it inside past the 40-yard line, picks up three on the play to the 42-yard line before he's ta taken down. On the stop for Florida a &M was the Montre Moore, the big man in the middle, and that will make it a second down and seven for Norfolk State. Just love the play selection, though, today, Ross, mixing up a lot of pass, like a lot of RPOs going outside to James and also the tight ends doing a good job of mixing up the plays today for the Spartans. Carter sends Ellington in motion as, again, Florida and m crowds the line of scrimmage as Johnson gets the pitch outside. Might have had numbers there, but slipped up as he tried to make a cut inside, and he loses the three that he gained on first down. That'll make it a third down and ten. Definitely had some space on that outside if he could get there. Just wasn't able to make the outside cut. He was brought down for a loss. A loss of three. So it'll make it a third down and 10 for the Spartans. They need to make it to the 49-yard line for the first. As James back in at wide out, he and Ellington lined up to the near side as James goes in motion. Florida and them showing blitz. Carter steps up in the pocket, avoids one tackle, stiffs arm another man, but he's going to get taken down around four yards shy of the first down. And on the stop is Terry Jefferson, the nickel back, and that'll bring up the fourth down. And out comes the punting unit again for the Spartans. Saw that athletic ability by Carter getting away from that pressure. Just wasn't able to get that extra four yards he needed for the first down. And we'll see. As Zenday Ray back. Check that. George Webb back deep to return the punt. That's Florida and m We'll see Richter get the punt away. It's a high spiral that we, Webb will take inside the 10 at the 5. He tries to avoid the tackle and runs into his own man. And now inside the 5 and trying to stiff arm a player. Can't do it as he gets out to the 9-yard line. We have a flag thrown around the 3-yard line. And it's a hold or a face mask against the Spartans. We'll see what the call is going to be. A little pinball action there inside the 5-yard line. As the Spartans did everything they could to corral Webb. Slippery. A runner there with 47 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. We're tied at seven. This could either keep FAMU inside the 10-yard line or give them a little bit of breathing room. Depends on the conversation. It's a long one. It's two flags thrown. We'll see what... What the officials come out of the conversation with. Still discussing it. Roy Bernard, the referee, yet to make the call. During the return, personal foul, blindside block. Receiving team, number 38. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down. And Jalen Randolph, the guilty party for Florida a &M. That will mark the football at the two-yard line with 47 seconds left to go. Bam, you. With that worst starting field position of the game. Will come out for their third opportunity with the football. Both teams scored on their first drive. And we'll have a stoppage. As Bernard and the head linesman now will discuss things. That's Daniel Shelton. And again, we'll see what the conversation. Correction. The personal foul for blindside block was on the kicking team, number 38. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run, which was the nine-yard line. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. That's Rashard Russell. 
Actually, Devin Coles, the guilty party there, the freshman. So from the two-yard line now out to the 24-yard line, Lord A&M will Devin. start at the 24th. And Coach Scott looking for an explanation, not getting it, as Stanley back out onto the field. He drops back to pass, looking downfield. Pass is going to be complete over the middle of the field. Wide open was the tight end. Making the play out past the 45 to the 44. And sneaking out was Kamari Young. That's his first reception. Yeah, against Stanley, staying, standing in that pocket. No pressure. Gets in a, wide, a wide open receiver down the field. Another first down for the Rattlers. Stanley gets the ball out quickly. He's only been sacked three times here this year. As Stanley looks for a bubble screen, gets it. But not much doing there. Nice job reading that one was Nigel Chavis. He comes up and makes a stop for a pickup of one with 15 seconds to go here in quarter number one as Xavier Smith was the intended target. It'll be a second down and nine with five seconds left. Let's see if Florida A&M can get the play off before the end of the quarter, and I don't think they will. It will be the end of the first quarter. We'll move to the second quarter. That's the end Tied end at the seven. Quarter. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium as we're tied at second seven. As we begin the second quarter, FAMU with a second down and nine, moving from left to right now. With the football as Stanley... Sends three wide receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near. Stanley drops back to pass with time, looking down the field. Has a man. He's wide open. Pass is going to be incomplete. As Shavali Williams was beaten a little bit there by Marcus Williams. But the wind looked like it held that one down, and Williams had a chance at the football, but he couldn't haul it in. Oh, the receiver was definitely open. Stanley underthrew him. Maybe the wind did take it. It was good coverage. It's just... Got him by a couple yards, but the throw was definitely underthrown. Almost an interception for the Spartans. That'll bring up third down and nine for Stanley. As Jennings in the backfield. As there's a football on the field now. We are ready for action. Again, Jennings stays in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the far side of the field. One to the near. For Stanley for this third down and nine. Stanley with the blitz coming. Drops back. Looking downfield. Had a man. Pass is going to be over. Shot and thrown out of bounds. And we'll have Marcus on the field as well. Ah, that's a hold. It's going to be a hold, as you heard. And I think the Spartans will decline it. There's no foul on the play for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket. Holding. Offense. Number 54. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, fourth down. So for Florida and m that was Andre Regis, an offensive lineman who gets flagged for the penalty. The Spartans will decline it. And we'll see the punting unit again. And Chris Duell will kick it back to Tremaine Talbert, who stands at his own 15-yard line with 14.47 left to go here in quarter number two. As for Duel, we'll get the punt away. It's a high spiral that Talbert will take at the five-yard line. Avoids one tackle outside the 10. Gets taken down, actually still on his feet as he crawls towards the 17-yard line. It'll be a first down. We'll have a, a first down and 10 for Norfolk State at their own 17. Talbert did a good job of getting out of trouble there and with a solid return, gives the Spartans... The football at the 17-yard line. And it, Ross, you saw in that last possession how uh, Norfolk State put a lot of pressure on Stanley in the last the last couple of possessions there and forced him to throw the ball away a couple times. So a good sign of putting pressure on Stanley to make him uncomfortable in the pocket. And Savage back in the backfield. Three ride outs to the far side for Carter. Again, Florida A&M crowds the line of scrimmage as Savage gets the handoff and he'll lose two yards as he gets dumped as well back in the backfield after the whistle. No flag there. It will be a second down and 10 as they gave him credit back to the line of scrimmage. 
Coach Simmons in pregame talked about the main emphasis was to stop the run. So far, they're doing a good job of that. The exception of a couple uh, Kevin Johnson runs, they've done a great job stopping the Spartans on the, on the ground. Fagan, the linebacker, makes a stop as we get to the second down and 10. Again, it's going to be a play action, and it's going to be a complete pass out to Marquis Ellington on a nice slant pass, and he gets outside the 35 to the 37-yard line, enough for a first down. RPO again, and the Spartans make a fan view play on their close coverage. Well, Ellington at 6'6", that time he didn't have to use his height, just use his size in terms of his weight to shield the defender and get the catch for the first down for the Spartans. Three wide outs to the top of the formation, one to the near for Carter. That's Savage to his left. Carter drops back to pass with time. Pass is going to be complete to Savage. Savage lowers his shoulder. Gets out past the 40 to the 42-yard line. A solid pickup of five on first down. Out of the backfield with Savage out to the 42. It's the second down now for Norfolk State. As again, the Spartans go four wide. Savage stays in the backfield. Carter awaits the snap. And Florida and m will jump. And it's going to be offsides against the Rattlers and Richard Summers. That hard count. It should be enough for a first down. Offsides. Defense. Number 90. That five-yard penalty will result in a first down. You always think about the hard count of the cadence. That time Carter, maybe with a little hard count, jumped the, uh, got the defender to jump offsides. Savage stays in the backfield. Four wide outs. The Spartans pointing out the blitz there. Carter gets it out to James quickly. Another catch for James. He lowers his shoulder, gets inside Florida AM territory to the 46 yard line. A pickup of six on first down. It'll be second down and four. Another great play by James. He's been very active so far in this first half, inside and outside, uh, both receiver spots. Again, the corner's playing off a little bit. Eric Smith has struggled as well as Troy Hilton. Bigger corners, but just can't stay with the speedy receivers from Norfolk State. As Carter will send Williams in motion. As he awaits the snap, he hands it off to Savage running left side. Savage with the hole will pick up the first down. Drags tackles inside the 40 down to the 36. It's enough for a first down. A pickup of 10 on Savage's best carry of the day. And Norfolk State moving the football well again mixing up the pass and the run against this FAMU defense absolutely being very versatile on offense that time Savage gets the handoff and gets a first down runs behind that big offensive line and they just move the Rattlers out of the way and got the first down Carter back to the line of scrimmage two wide receivers to the far side one to the near that's Ellington as Carter will keep it this time on the quarterback keeper he tries to spin his way inside the 35 does gets taken down at the 38 yard line as we have players down. And I think a Rattler was down. That's big number 93, Demontre Moore, 6'3", 310. The redshirt senior gets up with 11.30 left to go in the tie ball game in the second quarter. He gets to his feet and maybe holding his left hamstring there. The Spartans will have it. And they're going to have to stop the clock here as the officials sent a man off and that was more and the clock will resume with 11 18 left to go here in quarter number two the spartans with the first actually a second down and seven from the fam u 33 yard line carter hands it off to hewlett hewlett hit in the backfield hard he avoids one tackle, gets to the 29-yard line, which will make it a third down and three for the Spartans, probably in four-down territory right here with 10.52 left to go here in the quarter number two. We're tied at seven. Good job for, by Hewlett to hold on to that ball. He got hit a couple times going through the hole, and he held on to it. Hewlett stays in at tailback. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As Carter surveys the defense, drops back the pass. Looks over the middle pass. going to be complete to Ellington. He'll pick up the first down inside that zone. He drags tacklers to the 15-yard line. As he'll... There, Mark Ellington. Now with his third reception of the night. 
bro. You play zone on, on uh, Carter, he's going to pick you apart. That time, Ellington just sat in the spot and got the catch and <laughs> still was on his feet as the re referee finally blew the whistle before progress gave him, gives him the first down. Three wide outs for Carter. In the backfield is Hewlett. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near as Carter will keep it. Bounces inside, and he gets hit hard after pickup of one. Merriweather came up and got the hit also. There was Terry Jefferson. He did a good job of staying at home. It'll be a second down and 10. Well, Merriweather wears 52. He looked like Ray Lewis on that one as he gave Carter a pretty good shot. And that would be a second down now and 10 as the ball will be spotted at the 16-yard line. The Spartans in the red zone for the second time today. A bunch formation to the near side. Justin Smith lined up to the far side of the field by himself. Hewlett in the backfield. Carter drops back the pass, looking out in the flat pass. It will be incomplete, thrown short of Anthony Williams, but he was well covered there by the nickelback, Terry Jefferson. A great coverage by Jefferson that time on Williams. Carter not able to connect on that one. Threw it a little too early. In field goal range, but it's a third down and 10 now for Norfolk State. As Carter looks to the sideline for the play. Play clock at 18. So time on the clock as the Spartans get settled. Four wideouts in the formation. Two split to either side. Hewlett still in the backfield. Carter waits the snap. Rolls right. Looks downfield. Had a man. He tries to avoid a couple of tackles. He gets to the 10-yard line, and he's pushed forward. And he gets near the first down marker. Let's see where they mark him down. And they will give him credit for the first down. The extra push there by Kenneth Kirby. The left tackle gives the Spartans a first down. You see why they have those weight training programs, Ross. And that was definitely a good push by the Spartans. And that might be enough for a first down. It was. It's going to be first and goal now. He made it down to the six-yard line. That was the yard line of game. And the Spartans now with the first down and goal. Nice job there by Kenneth Kirby not giving up on the play after blocking, getting down the field and giving Carter a push. Absolutely. As the play clock now at 10, two wide receivers split to either side for Carter. Hewlett in the backfield. Carter will hand it to Hewlett in between the tackles. Hewlett gets taken down by a shoulder pad at the three-yard line, maybe the two. A pickup of four on first down will be second down and goal. You know, the Spartans have good change of pace backs. So he did bring Hewlett, Johnson, and of course the senior Savage. That time Hewlett got a, an opportunity to get in just a little short, but he liked his change of pace uh, running style. Spartans now with 208 yards of total offense here in the first half with 810 left to go in the quarter. Carter will again send four wideouts, two split to either side. Hewlett stays in the backfield. Again, Florida and m crowding the line of scrimmage. The handoff goes to Hewlett, and he gets into the end zone for the score, and the Spartans retake the lead at 13-7. to Oh, great run by Hewlett. Using explosiveness, goes right through the hole and gets the touchdown for the Spartans as, as they take the lead. Hewlett with his first rushing touchdown of the year. As Nardone will come on to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. To make it a seven point ball game. The snap is good. The kick is up. It's high enough, long enough. And Nardone is hit as well. It's up and through. So we'll tack on some yardage. Maybe to the kickoff if the Spartans elect to, as it is a 14-7 ball game. We'll hear the call from the official. It might have been a personal foul there. And I think Coach Scott will elect to take it on the kickoff with 7.58 left to go. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Media timeout. Timeout taken on the field, 14 to 7 is your score. Norfolk State retakes the lead with 7.58 left to go here in quarter number two. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Yeah. Welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium. As your score is 14 7 now, Norfolk State retakes the lead in the second quarter with 7.58 remaining. And after the personal foul, the Spartans will kick off from the 50 yard line as Ryan Richter. Get set to tee it up. And again, the Spartans using a 13-play, 83-yard drive 
and a second rushing touchdown of the season from Gerald Hewlett and two yards out. Gives them a seven-point advantage as Richter comes out to kick this one off, and it's going to be in the end zone around eight yards deep, and it will be a first down and 10 now for FAMU at their own 25-yard line as the Spartans scored first in today's ball game. FAMU came back and scored right after that. See how they respond. Ryan Stanley comes back out. And we'll see Bishop Bonnet in the backfield. With Stanley. Florida and in with 24 yards rushing today. All of those were on the first drive. And they all came from Bishop Bonnet. He stands to the left of Stanley as a man comes in motion. That's Xavier Smith. And it's going to be a quick flip to Smith. Smith with room to run. Gets taken down past the 40. And it's enough for a first down to the 43-yard line. Hey, we talked about change of pace for the Spartans. Smith definitely change of pace, change of pace for the Rattlers. As Bonnie gets it, and we're going to have a flag thrown, and it should be a false start against Florida and M. False start. Offense number seven did not become set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. First down. And Willie Simmons, the offensive, uh, pretty much coordinator, the guy that gets things going, wanted to move fast. After a first down, he's done a good job of pushing the pace. And that time, just wasn't set as Stanley, again with Bonnet to his left, gets a high snap, and he'll keep it on the quarterback keeper. Tries to bounce it outside, lowers his shoulder, and goes out of bounds after a pickup of maybe one on the play. Savage was there on the stop. They give him a credit of one. It'll be second down and 15. Nice job there by the Spartans defensively as they had Bonnet corralled on that option keeper. It was definitely great containment that time by the defense. It'll be second down and 14 now for Florida and then Bonnet's to the left of Ryan Stanley. Four wideouts. Spartans show blitz. Now back off of Stanley. Looks out in the flat. Pass is going to be bounced. They look like it bounced from here. Marcus Williams caught the football. They said he did at least. The ruling on the field is a completed catch. The previous play is under further review. It bounced to the guy. And wow. I could bounce from here, but we'll see what they say. As you can see, the Spartans putting more pressure on Stanley as he's Looks like he's slowing down a little bit in terms of uh, getting his completions out. The, the Spartans, the last possession, put a lot of pressure on him, get, hit him a couple times in the backfield as well. And again, the score is 14-7, our first review of the day. And the first review using the replay system here at Dick Price Stadium as the MEAC has uh, mandated. Now that all schools have instant replay, 643 left to go. Here in quarter number two, this is the first replay here ever from the MEAC side of things from Norfolk State. And, and again, that's one of the things you like about replay. You'll get an opportunity to get it right and go back and look at the play and see if the play was correct. Absolutely. You want to make sure you get the play right. You don't want to take a lot of time, but you do want to make sure you get the plays right. I mean, the call's right. Because that and it now is. it would have been a four-yard pickup and... Would have been third down and 10. This is, uh, third down and 14 if you're Norfolk State. It's good that way. And if you're more, if you're Florida A&M, you, you get 10 yards here on third down. Absolutely. I mean, it looked like it hit the turf from here, but of course, we're a little far up from the field, but we'll see what they call here. Again, this is, was a completed catch by Marcus Williams. And that would have been his second catch of the day if it's completed. And we'll see what the result of the replay is. Again, 6.43 left to go here in quarter number two. Norfolk State with two touchdowns here today, both rushing. 
you're right, Brock, both rushing, but the way Jawan Carter is spreading the wealth on offense, getting a lot of receivers involved. You know, James, Justin Smith, Ellington, and Anthony Williams have all caught passes from from uh, from Carter. And the replay booth set up right to our left here. It's a long conversation with head official Roy Bernard. And with that, the clock remained running. And the clock remained running at 6.43 after a completed catch in inside. So you have to get that right. right. And then you have to make sure you get the spot correct from the last uh, from the last down. There's a lot and of factors going into that. If it was incomplete. As again, Bernard. Awaiting the conclusion of the replay. Nice timeout for both teams to collect themselves as well. Again, anything being the first time, you know you'll see some hiccups and maybe a lengthier discussion. As we'll see what it is and Bernard is done with the conversation. And we'll hear his Bernard now. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Third down, Florida a &M. The clock will start. Am I ready for play? Yep, yeah, well, there you go. First review stands. Third down and 10 now for Ryan Stanley and Florida a &M. Two wide receivers split to either side. Bonnet stays in the backfield. Stanley looking at four down linemen for the Spartans. As he drops back to pass. With time, steps up. Pass is going to be complete. Making the catch is Xavier Smith. He gets in Norfolk State territory to the 41. Good coverage. Almost came out of Smith's hands, but he corralled it for the first down at the Norfolk State 41. Yeah, definitely a great catch by Smith. He was going out of bounds and kept on. Kept, kept possession of it and got the uh, reception. And, and again, they go out to Smith. Smith turns the corner, gets another first down. And again, these passes coming within three yards of the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage and inside of the 30-yard line to the 29 for Florida a &M. Yeah, Stanley just letting his playmakers make the plays after the catch. And Smith trots off to the sideline. Zenday Ray checks in for him. Stanley will have Bonnet to his right. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. And Stanley hands it off to Bonnet in between the tackles, rolls left side. The Spartans corral him after a pickup of three on the play. Speller there along with Ricky Thomas for Norfolk State. Pickup of three down to the 27 yard line of Norfolk State. So it'll be a second down and seven. Florida and m same formation two wide receivers to the near side one to the far Stanley again we'll hand it off to bonnet bonnet in between the tackles this time gets near first down they will give him credit down to the 20 before he's taken down it will be a first down for Florida and m with five minutes to go here in the second quarter Tom bonnet got a nice burst through the line got a first down for the rattlers as they move the chains Long look for Stanley now to the sideline. Again, the Spartans scored on their first drive. FAMU answered. The Spartans scored on their last drive, and FAMU now in the red zone trying to answer the score. As Bonnet will get the handoff rushing left side, has a wall of blockers inside the 10, and he steps out of bounds at the 7. As we have a Spartan down on the field 
injured, and it looks like it's Ricky Thomas Jr. Timeout on the field for a player injury. And the timeout's going to be taken on the field. With 4.29 left to go here in the second quarter. As the Spartans did a good job of stringing that out to out. the six-yard line, and a timeout will be taken on the field. 14 to 7 is your score. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. First down and goal, and FAMU gets in on the score. Jennings gets it in for um, six yards out and uh, scores. And the Spartans one point away from being tied again with FAMU. And again, both teams have answered after uh, each other's scores here today with 418 left to go. FAMU trailing Norfolk State 14-13. And both teams have methodically went down the field, Ross, switching up the playbook, keeping the defense off balance. So both teams doing a great job in terms of play selection for both of their scores. Ali on for the extra point to tie the ball game up out of the hold of Fadul. It's a low snap, but the kick is up. It's high enough. It's up, and it is through. We're tied at 14. We're tied at 14 with 418 left to go here in quarter number two. And both offenses. Have been the story here. 210 yards of total offense for Norfolk State on 34 plays, 190 yards on 22 plays for FAMU. They've rushed for 55 yards, a 6.9 average. Norfolk State 61, a 3.4 yard average. Norfolk State 149 passing yards, 135 for FAMU. Yeah, again, both teams are doing a great job of mixing up the plays, keeping the defense off balance. Now let's see if the Spartans with 4.18 left can uh, can do the same thing on, the, on offense. And running over the left side for FAMU for that score for Jennings. As they've done a good job over the last two. Those last two plays were over the left side. And first from Bonnet, who has six carries for 48 yards. And Jennings, they're capped it off with a six-yard touchdown run. That's his first of the day. And now comes FAMU to kick off. It will be Julius Duarte to kick off. He gets it off, and it will be angled towards Johnson. Johnson will catch it at the 7. Johnson avoids one tackle, gets to the 20-yard line before he's bounced out of bounds, and that's where the Spartans will start this drive. 19-yard line will be the spot, and the NSU offense will come out. And with four minutes and 13 seconds left to go here in the second quarter, we'll start at their own 19 as Carter comes out with Johnson in the backfield. Plenty of time here to get some points on the board before the half for the Spartans. As Carter will send two wide receivers to the near side. James lines up in the slot for the Spartans is FAMU. Crowds the line of scrimmage. The handoff goes to Johnson. He cuts in the backfield. Gets up to the 20 before he stopped up. Maybe the 21, a pickup of two. He does a good job of once he plants his feet, he gets going forward. Absolutely. Does a great job of misdirection when he runs. And he can use his power and his speed as he did a lot of weight training in the offseason, preparing for this season. As only as a freshman, Ross, local kid from Suffolk. 3.53 left to go here in the second quarter. Carter will have Johnson to his left as, again, FAMU. Crowds the line of scrimmage. Carter rolls right. Looks off for Ellington. Ellington with the catch to the 25-yard line before he stopped up. And pulled down out of bounds. A pickup of about six out to the 36-yard line. So they'll make it a third down and three. Nice job there by the Spartans. Just getting solid yardage, not making it a third down and long situation here. It'll be a third down and three. Absolutely. Definitely manageable for the Spartans here on this third down with three minutes left. Five wide outs for Carter. Johnson lines up in the slot to the near side. Three wide outs to the far side. James in the slot to the far side. As Carter looks over the defense, eight seconds on the play clock. Sends Johnson in motion. As Carter drops back to pass. With time, steps up. Now backs up. Looking downfield. 
Throws in the direction of McFarland, and McFarland is pushed out of bounds. And it will bring up a fourth down. Carter had to avoid some pressure up the middle. He went outside and tried to get a receiver, but nobody was really open, so he kind of threw it away, which is a smart move to throw it away at that point. As Richter will come out. And Ray will stand at the FAMU 35-yard line as Richter gets set to punt. High snap. The punt's away. And it's a high punt. And Ray will call for a fair catch. And he'll make it at the 39-yard line. As Richter Media timeout. got that punt away. Just in time with 2.43 left to go in the second quarter. We'll take a timeout. We're knotted up at 14. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Into action. What would you like the power to do? Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. We're knotted up at 14. 2.43 left to go here in quarter Number two, as Ryan Stanley comes out, solid field position at the 39-yard line of FAMU. As he drops back to pass, has a man out in the flat, and he was open. That was Xavier Smith, who's just too high. Definitely open, and that's his, one of his favorite receivers. Just a high, a high pass. It stops the clock, though, at 239. And with the Rattlers, had pretty good field position going in here on this possession. Stanley now with the second down and 10. Same formation, two wide receivers. Split to the far side, two to the near side. There's Stanley. Has Jennings in the backfield with him. Spartan showing blitz. And it's going to be a handoff off to Jennings. Jennings with a head full of steam. Gets out to the 45-yard line to pick up a six on second down. It'll be a third down and four for the Rattlers at their own 45. Clock moving with 2.25 left to go here in the second quarter. Both teams with... A full complement of timeouts here as Jennings will line up to the left of Stanley in the shotgun. Again, four wideouts. For Stanley. He sends Jennings in motion as Stanley drops back to pass. Pass is going to be complete for the first down inside Norfolk State Territory as Marcus Williams with another reception to the Norfolk State 44. It's been in some kind of a zone. Stanley saw that area in the zone. Found his receiver for a first down. Stopped the clock as well. Stanley, 11 of 16 for 146 yards today. Carter, 14 of 18 for 154. As Stanley has a first down and 10 now. The Norfolk State, 44. Drops back to pass. Stanley, wide open. And the flat again is Xavier Smith. Picks up the first down at the 33 yard line, maybe the 32. Again, Stanley not getting much pressure. And when he's comfortable, he can pick you apart if you let him. There's a lot of open receivers and open spots on the defense. Again, three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far side for Stanley. As the handoff will go to Jennings, running left side. Jennings, a hard man to take down as he picks up five on first down. He's brought down by a trio of Spartans, led by Dixon. Also, Ron Speller there and Tyree, Tyree Givers-Wilson. They give him credit for four. It'll be a second down at six. Same formation, though, for the Rattlers as they're quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Stanley drops back the pass, and it's going to be a screen, and it's going to be complete, but Tyree, but right there on the stop is Nigel Chavis, maybe for a loss of one, and the timeout's going to be taken by Florida and in with 41 seconds timeout. to go here Florida in quarter number two. Great read by Chavis. First yard timeout, 30 seconds. You saw the whole play develop, waiting for the for Xavier Smith to get that catch and kind of tackle for a loss for the Spartans. They're not going to give him a credit for a tackle for loss. They give him credit to the 28-yard line for no gain. Chavis has moved to linebacker this year, right, Ross? He played DN early in his career. And this might be four down territory as well for Florida AM. As 
Bonnet comes into the backfield for Stanley. Two wide receivers to the top of the formation, one to the near side. As Stanley looks over the defense. And Stanley awaits the snap. Drops back the pass. With time, steps up in the pocket. He's going to be chased down by Deshaun Dixon and pushed out of bounds. But he picks up the first down at the 18-yard line. Great coverage downfield. They let Stanley get out of the pocket and get a first down. Also stops the clock as it gets out of bounds. With 36 seconds on the clock. Here in the second quarter, Stanley will look to the sideline again with two timeouts remaining. Four wideouts on the field for Stanley. Bonnet to his left as Stanley drops back to pass. Looking into the end zone on the fade. Pass is going to be incomplete. Pass was intended for Marcus Williams. Good coverage there by Savage. And Quinterly also back there. Yeah, Savage, great coverage from a Baltimore native. Not allowing Stanley to get that pass completed in the back of the end zone. 31 seconds remaining here in quarter number two. It's a second down and 10 for FAMU. Again, they'll bring four wideouts on to the field, two split to either side. Bonding in the backfield to the right of Stanley. We're tied at 14. FAMU trying to get some points on the board before the end of the first half. They'll get the football first to start the third quarter, but we're going to have a flag thrown as we're going to have a false start against FAMU. False start. Offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty, second down. Again, that's the second penalty on Andre Regis. Which makes it a second down and 15 for the Rattlers. Same formation, Bonnet to the right of Stanley in the shotgun. Spartan showing blitz with Nigel Chavis. And Stanley awaits the snap, drops back to pass. Pressure coming from the outside pass is going to be complete to Xavier Smith. He gets going on his feet, he gets down inside the 15. Taken down at the 12 yard line. Slippery receiver there, Xavier Smith, the sophomore. And that'll be the third, actually second the second time. Timeout, Florida a &M. It'll be the second, second timeout. timeout for Florida A&M as the ball will be spotted at the 12-yard line with 22 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. It'll be a third down and four as a pickup of 11 there for Smith. Well, you called him a slippery receiver, Ross, and you saw how he got away from a Spartan defender and picked up some extra yards. And now they're in great position at the 12-yard line as the Rattlers are. 22 seconds remaining here and the second quarter neither team has led more by seven points more than seven points and famu has not here today. as they're looking to take their first lead of the ball game inside the red zone with a third down and four from the norfolk state 12 yard line the yard line to make is a maybe the eight and a half here and stanley will have bonnet to his right three wide right receivers to the top of the formation one to the near Smith lined up closer to the line of scrimmage to the far side of the field as they check with the sideline. For the play, Stanley. Awaits the snap, drops back to pass. With time looking into the end zone, pass is going to be incomplete, thrown too high as the pass was intended for Manigo. Good coverage there by Savage and did a good job of squeezing Manigo towards the sideline as well with 18 seconds to go. We'll see a field goal att attempt coming from Florida A&M. Well, he definitely, Savage used the sideline as his friend. And the receiver ran out of real estate to make that catch. Sets up a fourth down here for the Rattlers. And a 30-yard field goal attempt from the right hash from Ali, who's two of six this year on field goal attempts. And this to give FAMU a lead. Out of this holder for duel. Snap is high. The kick is high enough. It is up and it is through. And FAMU has scored on their last two possessions and take a three-point lead with 14 seconds remaining here in half number one. And the Spartans, again, we'll see fam, you get the football first to start the second half. The lead now three of seven on the year. And fam, you will kick off. And the Spartans will have 
14 seconds with the football and hopefully you can get a big return here from Kevin Johnson or Talbert maybe and be able to answer or just get something on the three times remaining or just maybe get a big play here going into the halftime definitely capable we see what he can do on the offensive end special teams as well so hopefully he can get his hands on this ball and make it makes try to make something happen as Duarte will kick off for the Rattlers leading 17-14 this is their first lead of the ball game Duarte gets his leg into this one and it will slide into the end zone and the Spartans will start from the 25 here with 14 seconds left and let's see if Coach Scott will just play for halftime here with three timeouts remaining See if they can get a big play here, and it looks like they will play for halftime. It looks like the Spartans will take a knee. One timeout for FAMU. And then we'll see Jawan Carter line up under center. And that will do it for the first half. 17-14 will be your halftime score. Fam U scores on their last two possessions to take a three-point lead moving into the break. We'll take a timeout. You're listening to NSU Football and MEAC Football on uh, the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as FAMU scores with 14 seconds left to go here in quarter number two to make it a 17-14 ball game. And again, both offenses uh, had the upper hand on the defenses here in the first half. 215 yards of total offense for Norfolk State, 244 for FAMU, 169 through the air, 75 on the ground. And they really got going in the second uh, in the second quarter, especially late. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Stanley uh, was comfortable in the pocket. You know, for for uh, for FAMU, and that was that was that gave them an opportunity to get some scores. You know, for the Spartans, you know, I like the way they're you know distributing the ball around different receivers. The running game is clicking as well. So if we can continue that in the second half, we should be okay. And both teams uh, really did a good job of uh, taking what the defense gave them. Both teams did a good job of uh, throwing short and letting their athletes make plays. And DK James with a solid half, six receptions, 61 yards. Xavier Smith, seven receptions, 69 yards. Neither with the touchdown. But you see their athletic ability. Absolutely. Carter's just, he's, he's, like I said, he's, he's distributing the ball to different receivers. Even Savage caught a couple passes out of the backfield. And he's keeping the defense on their heels, so to speak. So if the Spartans can continue to mix up their offense and uh, keep FAMU off, off, off balance a little bit, then they should be able to take some shots down the field. In the second half, we'll have to see Ryan Stanley maybe get a little bit more pressure on him. But again, he's only been sacked three times this year. He does a good job of getting the ball out of his hands. He's 14 of 21. 169 yards, but they've done a good job of getting Xavier Smith in some uh, misdirection and getting him going in when he's already got a head full of steam, and it's kind of hard to keep up with a fast guy and a shifty guy like that when a head, with a head full of steam. Well, Coach Simmons talked about how, how Smith has been stepping up since they've had an injury um, in the receiving uh, department, so you know, Sim, uh, Coach Simmons talked about Smith, and, and like you said, Stanley gets the ball out so quick, he gets the ball to his playmakers, which Simmons prefers him to do He's had, a, he's had a great job of, uh, of getting his playmakers the ball. That's a quick wrap-up of the first half. 17-14 is your score. We'll take a timeout. And when we'll come back, we'll have more from Dick Price Stadium as FAMU leads Norfolk State 17-14 at the break. What would you like the power to do? Cut this one out. Cut this one out. 17-14 your score here at halftime at Dick Price Stadium. 
FAMU with a late field goal, a 30-yard field goal, makes it a three-point game. It's their first lead of the game as well as, again, today was a full day of MEAC action with one game happening earlier this week as North Carolina a knocked off North, excuse me, Delaware State. Bethune-Cookman already victorious here today. 37-29 was that final score over Howard. Starting at 6 p.m. in just a few minutes, we'll see North Carolina Central travel to Morgan State. And again, 37-0. North Carolina a shuts out Delaware State on Thursday to get their first conference win of the season. This is a good game here. Though 17-14 is your score at the half. Florida and m leading Norfolk State by three. And the Rattlers will get the football to start the second half. We'll take a quick timeout here with 10-19 before the start of the second half. We'll take this timeout. We'll be back after this break. You are watching and listening to MEAC Digital Football on the NSU Sports Network. They will break. Yes, these are my people. Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. Norfolk State and Fam U here. It is a three-point lead for the Rattlers. Ross Gordon now joined by Kevin Talley. Talley, a former linebacker here at Norfolk State University. Uh, inducted into the Norfolk State University Hall of Fame last night along with Don Carey, the James, and Laverne Sweat. So also uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame as well as Marty Miller and some other folks uh, last night. Beautiful ceremony. Beautiful to, to be recognized for your career. I know you're excited about that, Kevin. Yes, we're very humble. You know, it's a dream come true. Kevin, a local product from out of Newport News. You came along when the big name was was pretty big over at Warwick High School. You came over here to Norfolk State, though, and made a name for yourself. Talk a little about your, your experience here at NSU. Well, my experience here at Norfolk State is incredible. You know, I always loved Norfolk State. I always young to behold the green and gold. Uh, which me and you came in together as freshmen. We were talking in access program, dreaming, just dreaming, talking about what we want to do, what we want to accomplish here. And to see you still going strong here, I was able to do my little thing on the field. It's, it, we did good, man. It, it, it good. We see each other a lot. and A lot of people don't know we live close to each other. Absolutely. So we get a chance to talk a little bit more than a lot of people might know. But it's always good to just reminisce and talk a little bit about some of the things we had here, and it's changed a lot since you've been here. The turf field, uh, the, the buildings on campus, beautiful uh, atmosphere. Talk a little about coming back and seeing well, how this campus has changed. Oh, it's amazing. Like last night, I was, uh, I was talking to the crowd, the you know, audience, about the White House, you know, back from the old school. Now to see they build a new, I don't even know what the name of the new dorm is, and that's amazing. I love the black and uh, the, the gray and the white checkerboard on the side of the building. That's amazing. The field, now we're going to be able to have. We need to be start bringing the Virginia High School State Championship here. And I feel, feel like you, being in Norfolk, we got a really great area. So this is, should be where the high school state championship should be here every year. Hey, Kevin, is you also get uh, invited to a great game here today, 17-14. Uh, we didn't have much success against FAMU back when we were in school, but it's good to see us competing on this level here today. Absolutely. It's good to see the guys competing. That's what, as a competitor, all you want to do is have a chance to be in the game. Um, that's what we do. That's what we go through all the training and practice and all those things like that. It's to prepare and to perform on this stage right here. And Kevin, always good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Sorry we didn't have that much time to talk with you, but always good to see you. It's always an honor. Hey, it's different now. Mr. Kevin Talley on oh. this pass today. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Kevin Talley, thank you for stopping thank by, you. Kevin, and congratulations on getting to the Hall of Fame. Behold, green and gold. That's Kevin Talley. We'll take this time out, and when we come back, we'll have the start of the second half. Norfolk State trails FAMU 17-14. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. To help turn your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? We're back here. We're back here at Dick Price Stadium. 17-14 is your score. Norfolk State trailing FAMU by three here 
as we get set for the start of the second half as we are joined now by Ube Cabre, a big weekend for Norfolk State as it was uh, Hall of Fame weekend here at Norfolk State and the Spartans uh, right now at the break trailing by three glad to have Kevin Talley with us but again in the second half to start the second half it's gonna be big for Norfolk State defensively to quickly get off the field against this FAMU team absolutely you know FAMU gets the ball to start the second half you want to get them and maybe a possibly three and out situation get the ball back and get some more points on the board We're doing a great job again of being very versatile offensively missing mixing up the plays so let's hope we can continue that in the second half as the band still on the field as we will start the second half in just a second as the band has to quickly get off the field and Again, welcome the Norcom High School marching band here as well. They did a good job of performing at the break as we are almost set for the start of the second half. It's a three-point lead for Florida and m 17 to 14, and they will get the football first as we will see George Webb back deep. Also back deep is the Dende Ray. And Norfolk State will kick off as Ryan Richter. And the Spartans will get things going. Here to start the second half, the Spartans will be moving from right to left. And again, if you're Norfolk State, defensively is where you have to make this big start. And where you have to get going against this FAMU offense, which got a little got a little bit going here at the end of the second quarter. Just, just weren't putting a lot of pressure on, on Stanley. He was comfortable in the pocket. And of course, he was looking for his favorite receiver, Smith. He had him a couple times in that last possession, and they were able to get three points to go into the halftime break. As Richter gets set to kick off, Webb and Ray back deep. Swirling win from the press box side to the visiting side as Richter gets the kick off. It's going to be high, and it's going to be short as Ray will take it at around the 14-yard line. Running left side, looking for a hole, gets it. And avoids one tackle before he's knocked down at the 32 yard line Chandler in on the stop for Norfolk State excuse me Savage in on the stop for Norfolk State and that will be where Florida A&M will start this drive at their own 32 yard line first and ten for the, Rattlers. As the Rattlers will come out with Bishop Bonnet in the backfield and the formation that really got going for Bam U three wide receivers to the far side with Smith lined up near the line of scrimmage Minigo lined up to the near side the Spartans crowding the line of scrimmage a gear here as Bonnet moves to the left and now it gets the handoff behind the line of scrimmage and he's hit hard Knocked down quickly by Bobby Price. Nice job of filling the hole there by Bobby as he was around the line of scrimmage. Oh, great play by Price, the senior from the beach. Eluded a, an offensive lineman and, and got the running back to knock him, knock him down for a, for a short game. A pickup of one there for Bonnet. And he stays in the backfield on the second down and nine as it's a low snap as looking downfield is... Stanley and the pass hits the back of Shivai Williams who's in tight coverage with Manigo and that will bring up a third down good coverage there by Shivai Williams it was great coverage I was hoping they weren't going to call anything he didn't look back but good coverage knocked the ball away and it's going to be a third down here for the Rattlers you see Cephas Harden on the field for the first time today at the linebacker spot transferred back to NSU for his final season of play as Stanley Awaits the snap, gets it, and it's going to be a screen look as the pass is going to be complete. Out to Manigo, he avoids one tackle of Williams. He picks up the first down ball, poked away from behind, but out of bounds at the 50 inside Norfolk State territory at the 49. It looked like it was supposed to be a screen there, and the Spartans had that covered up. Manigo just worked his way free and found his way inside Norfolk State territory to the first for first down. Yeah, Stanley went to a second option, and Manigo was open, got the first down for them. As again, the ball's going to be sprayed out to Smith. Smith with a block in front of him. Picks up 
Nine yards on the play out to the 41 yard line. That's a good block out there by the wide receiver. And Smith picks up eight on first down. It'll be a second down and two. Stanley going to his favorite receiver. And Smith, far side. Got a big gain on that play on first down. Again, Stanley not really looking down the field. Threw the ball down the field once here today. Deep. But everything's been around the line of scrimmage. The Spartans will see a false start on FAMU. False start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, second down. Kenan Forbes, the guilty party there. That backs the ball up to the Norfolk State 46-yard line. And it makes it a second down and we'll say seven. And I think Stanley does want to go down the field, Ross. He's just not able to get down there with a great defense. Quinley playing that safety position, locking that that, that backside and uh, locking it down. Stanley sends a man in motion. That's Ray as the snap is high. The handoff to Bonnet. Bonnet with a big hole. will pick up the first down and more. As Quindley takes him down at the 34-yard line, enough for a first down. High snap. Stanley recovers that snap, and they still get a first down with Bonnet. Low center of gravity just ducks under the offensive line and gets a first down for the Rattlers. Bonnet now, after that 12-yard pickup, has 62 yards rushing today. As Stanley again back to the line of scrimmage. Again, we'll hand it off to Bonnet, and this time the Spartans are ready. As Deshaun Dixon makes the stop behind the line of scrimmage at the 40, excuse me, 39-yard line, a loss of four on the play. Great pressure that time by the Spartans. They get the loss. And Dixon, the defensive end, has had a solid year this far for Norfolk State. It's a loss of five that makes it a second down and 15 for FAMU. Ray lined up to the near side for Stanley. As again, Stanley hands it off in between the tackles there. Running is the bigger back, Jennings. He picks up five yards back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be a third down and 10 for FAMU. Let's see if the Spartans bring pressure on the Rattlers here in this third and long. Again, the Spartans crowding the line of scrimmage. Four wide outs, two split to either side. Jennings stays in the backfield with Stanley. Stanley drops back to pass with time. Pressure comes. Pass is going to be behind Ray, his intended receiver. They'll bring up fourth down. Ray was open. And let's see what Van Butte decides to do. It's a fourth down and 10, a little bit out of field goal range. Well, actually, they're going, to, they? <laughs> they're going to bring the field goal unit onto the field. From here, it'll be about a 51 yard field goal attempt for Ali. He has the leg. In the middle of the field, he has a leg to do it. In the middle of the field and 52 yards for a lead to make it a six point ball game if he can knock it through. The high snap, the kick is up and it's driven. It's long enough, it is up and it is through. 52 yard field goal attempt for Ali is good. He was knocking him through from about 55 in Free game with 11.30 left to go in the third quarter. It's a six-point lead for FAMU, 20-14. to 14. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. What would you like the power to do? Twenty to fourteen is your score as we welcome you back to Dick Price Stadium, Norfolk State and FAMU in a battle as FAMU has scored on their last three possessions. Norfolk State has held them to field goals here, so it's still a ball game at Dick Price Stadium. Again, we welcome you here today as the Spartans will get the first opportunity here in the second half. As the kick is away, and it's high, and it's short. And we'll see Johnson return it from the four-yard line. Johnson, with a head full of steam, running right side, avoids one tackle, gets taken down past the 25-yard line at the 26. And that's where the Spartans will start this drive. Let's see uh, if they make it, make, made any adjustments during the halftime break, Ross, in terms of their offensive philosophy. So far, so good on the offensive end. They just have to keep the Rattlers' defense on their heels again in the second half. As 
We see Jawan Carter come out. Aaron S Savage will be your tailback. Ellington lined up to the near side. Justin Smith to the far side. Here with eight seconds on the play clock. Carter sends Ellington in motion. And Carter will drop back the pass. With time, looking out for Anthony Williams, the tight end. He makes the catch. Picks up maybe two on the play. They give him credit to the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of three. It'll be a second down and seven. As Carter back to the line of scrimmage. And this time he'll hand it off to Savage running right side. Savage collared as he got to the 31-yard line and slung down. As that stop was made by Demontre Moore. Key third down here. Let's see what Carter can, uh, can do right here on his third and five at the 32-yard line. Carter will come back to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. That's Justin Smith. Savage remains in the backfield. Carter with 15 on the play clock. FAMU showing blitz. Blitz comes. Carter looking downfield. Pass is going to be complete to Justin Smith for the first down. He drags tacklers out past the 40 to the 45. Still on his feet as he drags tacklers to the 48-yard line. That's his first reception of the day, and it ends up in a first down. It was a great route by Smith. Great precise throw by Carter. They're on the same page on that one. And that enabled the Spartans to get the first down near midfield. Smith stays out there. As the fourth receiver, he lines up in the slot to the far side, two to the near side. As Carter still with Savage in the backfield. Savage will get the carry in between the tackles, running left side, keeping his feet moving. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Might have given him credit to the 49. And they did a pickup of one on first down much room there for Savage to get in these running lanes here in the second half so far. That's Carter. We'll send three wide outs in the formation. James lined up to the far side. Ellington lined up in the slot to the far side. Justin Smith to the near side. Again, Carter drops back the pass and we're going to have a penalty flag on the play. Looks like false start against Norfolk State. Snap infraction. Offense. Number 62. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's Dominique Jordan's second snap infraction of the day, and he'll come to the sideline. As the Spartans will change up their formation. Hewitt comes into the game. For the Spartans in the backfield with four wideouts, two split to either side on the second down and 15 for Carter. Carter drops back to pass. It's going to be a screen out to Hewlett. Hewlett makes one man miss, still on his feet. Gets taken down inside of FAMU territory at the 49-yard line. That's great balance by Hewlett because he could have went, could have been taken down earlier, but got a few extra yards by having a great balance. Makes it a third down and seven. It's an eight-yard pickup there for... Hewlett and the Spartans have another third down here to keep this drive alive at the 49 yard line of FAMU and again the Rattlers showing Blitz Blitz comes Carter looks wide open over the middle is Williams he does a good job of catching the football as he had it on his hip for a little bit and makes the catch at the 39 it'll be a first down I guess it, as long as you hold on to it doesn't matter where again And he has 23 yards to go. The safety valve for Carter. Carter awaits the snap. Hands it off to Johnson in between the tackles. Johnson keeps his feet moving forward as he rolls his way to the 36, maybe 35-yard line. They give him credit to the 36, a pickup of about two on first down. Or three, it'll be second down and seven. Yeah, Johnson's motor is just always running. That time he kept his feet rolling. Got a couple extra yards by doing that. Carter will send Johnson to his right. Two wide receivers in the formation. Talbert lined up to the top of the formation. McElhaney to the near side as Carter surveys the defense. Again, hands it off to Johnson. Johnson with a lot of room to run. Steps inside. It makes one cut at the 20. Still on his feet as he gets bumped inside the 10. Five. Touchdown. The freshman from Suffolk, Ross, showed on that play showed a lot. 
speed, agility, and power as the Spartans get a touchdown with the great ability from Johnson. And Kevin Johnson making a play for Rookie of the Year as the Spartans now tied at 20 with 7.16 left to go here in the third quarter. Big run there for, for Johnson, a 36-yard touchdown run. That's his second rushing touchdown of the day in the Spartans. An extra point away from taking a lead, Nardone out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. The snap is good. The kick is away. It's high enough. It's up, and it is good. And Norfolk State retakes a one-point lead at 21-20. 7-16 left to go here in the third quarter. Media timeout. And the timeout will be taken on the field. We'll take that timeout with them on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. What would you like the power to do? Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. Norfolk State retakes the lead 21-20. Here with 7-16 left to go in the third quarter. The second touchdown run of the day coming from Kevin Johnson. And the Spartans answer the field goal by Florida and m And the Rattlers will have to respond now as Richter to get the kick away. It's high and it's short. And again, it's a Zenday Ray that will take it at the 14-yard line as it was angled left side. And Ray almost lost the football there as he eluded the tackle there with McFarland, and then the Spartans corral him at the 23-yard line. Nice job there on kickoff coverage by the tight end there. McFarland comes up to make the initial hit. We talked about how great the tight ends were playing, playing exceptionally well on the special teams as they had great coverage on that on that kickoff. Again. You see the touchdown run there for Johnson. As he broke tackles in reverse field, you see the sprinter speed bounced off a tackle. Two of them at the 15-yard line to get in for the score, and the Spartans take the lead. And his troops come back out. Three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As it's going to be a quick swing pass out into the flat. Making the reception is Jennings out of the backfield. He picks up around six yards on the play before he's taken down by Myers from behind. Again, that up-tempo style that that FAMU likes to run. Not getting the Spartans enough time to get put pressure on Stanley. Second down and four now for Florida a &M. With 6.45 left to go in a swift moving third quarter. Two wide receivers to the near side. Jennings stays in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Stanley sends a man in motion. That's Smith. As the handoff goes to Jennings in between the tackle. And Tyree Givers-Wilson there to push him back. Also there for the Spartans is Josh Bryant. As he gets back to the line of scrimmage, not much more than that. And again, the Spartans with an opportunity to hear to get Florida and them off the field. On this third down at the FAMU 30-yard line. Three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Jennings in the backfield. Low snap for Carter. He looks out. Pass is going to be complete. As they're going to say he, Manigo makes the catch. Out past the 36-yard line. It's enough for a first down to pick up a five, maybe six. On the plays, we have an injured Rattler. Time out on the field for an injured player. As Manigo did a good job of coming down with the football inbounds, and it'll be a first down for Florida and m And Manigo's been very active throughout this game. He wasn't one of the players we were highlighting, but he's been a, a, a very a, a pleasant surprise for uh, FAMU today. He had 14 receptions on the Media year timeout on the field. with 181 yards. That was He now has two touchdowns coming in, but he's had a big game, and we'll take that timeout with them. 21-20, your score, Norfolk State with the lead. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Of dumbness. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? The injured Rattler was Kamari Thompson. He's taken off to the sideline. Hopefully everything's all right with him as Fam you now with the first down. Jennings in the backfield. Smith comes in motion. Play action. Pass is going to be complete out to Smith. Smith makes one man miss. Makes a couple people miss. Spins his way for a first down. You see why they want the ball in his hands, Ross. He can make things happen. That time they just got a little, a uh, little, a little screen on the other side, and he was able to get some positive yardage out of it. 
again. They've used Smith in every imaginable way here except running the football here today. He has nine receptions, 88 yards here today. For a 9.8 yard average. And again, everything's been short. As Bonnet's the back in the backfield, he'll get the handoff. It looks to rush the left side. Thomas had a shot at him. And he's run out of bounds by Tyree Givers Wilson inside Norfolk State Territory at the 45 yard line. Very shifty back. This is that time he faked to go inside, went outside, got some pressure, but got some positive yardage out of that run. Ball will be spotted at the 45 yard line. It'll be a second down and two for the Rattlers. It's Van Mew now. 217 yards passing, 89 yards rushing. As Bonnet lines up to the right side of Stanley. Two wide receivers split to either side. And Stanley sends a man in motion. As Stanley, quick drop here. Smith again. Smith will pick up the first down before he's pushed out of bounds. Rashard Russell is there as the ball will be spotted at the 39-yard line. And again, it's just quick stuff there for Florida a and m And the Spartans are playing off at the DB spot. And FAMU's sort of making the Spartans pay. Absolutely, taking advantage of it. Again, quick stuff. And it's also to Smith. And again, Smith has been all over the field making plays for the Rattlers. As Stanley will send another man in motion. Three wide receivers to the top of the formation as the handoff goes to Bonnet. Bonnet stops in the backfield and keeps going. And he cuts and makes one man miss and gets taken down by Bobby Price. As again, Shavai Williams... Had a, a chance to make him uh, miss in the open field. Couldn't do it. And it's a first down for Florida a m at the Norfolk State 25-yard line with 340 left to go here in quarter number three. Yeah, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle that Bonnet at that time took advantage of. Got some great, great yardage on that play. And Bonnet again will get the carry, this time running left side. And he gets five on first down, down to the 20-yard line. As he's now at... 84 yards, and we have an injured Spartan on the play. It's Karan Speller. Timeout on the field for an injured player. As Speller. Might have been injured by a little friendly fire there. And again, the ball will be spotted at the 15-yard line, and you have to credit Florida and them. They've done a good job of moving the football here since the latter part of the second quarter. They scored on... Each one of their drop on their last three possessions. They had two field goals and a touchdown. And Spartans have done a good, better job inside the 20. As the ball will be spotted at the 24, second down and five. But again, this this offense, everything around the line of scrimmage. And the Spartans making their first tackle. They haven't been able to do so over the last couple of uh, last couple of drives. Yeah, they just, you know, they're, they're, like you said, Stanley's not going downfield much. Simple passes. Just simple out routes, and you know, they're beating the Rattlers right now, are winning their one on one battle, making the first person miss and getting into the secondary of the Spartans. And Speller walks off under his own power. Fam, you will have a second down and five. We'll see Xavier Smith back into the ball game. He's got 10 catches for 94 yards. Bonnet, 12 carries for 89 yards. He has a seven yard average. He's back in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the near side. Two to the far side. As Stanley awaits the snap, he sends Smith in motion again. And the pass is going to be complete out to Smith again. The Spartans there. Better job of covering it that time. And they were in man coverage. It was a nice job coming across the line of scrimmage there by Devin Coles, it looks like. And coming up and making the first hit, it will be a loss of about three on the play. It'll make it a third down. And seven. A huge third down here. Because again, they're in field goal range for sure, but you know, you want to at least try to limit them to three if you can on this possession. It's a loss of two yards on the play for Xavier Smith. Makes it a third down and seven. Stanley in the shotgun again. Bonnet to his right as he sends Smith in motion again. Handoff goes to Bonnet in between the tackles. He's not going to pick up the first down. He gets to the 20. And Coach Simmons. Quickly sends out the field goal unit. And this one will be a 37-yard attempt. Near the same spot that 
Ali hit a 52-yard field goal attempt from moments ago. Out of the hole of Fadul. Snap is good. The kick is up, and it's high enough. It's long enough. It is up, and it is through. FAMU retakes the lead at 23-21 with 1.33 left to go here in quarter number three. And again, the Spartans did a good job bending, not breaking. Yeah, but Ali, who was two of six coming into this ball game, two of two here today, as he just hit a 37-yard field goal to go along with a 52-yarder, which matches a season long in the conference. Well, Ali's definitely a weapon for the Rattlers. As he gets six points off the special teams, two field goals for them, and then that's how they get a lead here. Again, the Spartans scored on a touchdown run by Kevin Johnson, a 36-yard touchdown run. And we'll see what the Spartans can do to answer that field goal by Florida A&M. What you like to see, good football game to start the season in conference play. Just like Kevin Talley said at halftime, he just likes to see them compete. As a competitor, you want these game to be comp games to be competitive, and the Spartans are definitely capable of winning this this uh, opening game in the MIA. Duarte to kick off, and this one's going to be short, and it's going to be taken by Johnson at the nine-yard line. Johnson makes my man miss. It's going to be a flag thrown as he gets taken down at around the 23-yard line. Few flags are thrown. Three of them. To be exact. Doesn't bode well for Norfolk State. During during the return. Holding. Return team. Number 44. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. First down. Treshawn Smith, the guilty party. So that'll back the Spartans up inside their own 15. Back to the 13-yard line with 127 remaining here in quarter number three. And we'll look at it. Today, penalties haven't been in the favor of Norfolk State. That's their sixth penalty for 55 yards as Savage into the backfield with Carter. And he'll get the handoff running right side. Savage hit at the line of scrimmage, fouls his way to the 15, a pickup of two on first down, they'll bring up a second down and eight. Savage will stay in the backfield. As the clock now moving towards a minute to go here in the quarter. With FAMU leading by two. Blitz coming from FAMU. The pass is going to be complete out to McElhaney. McElhaney will get to the 21 yard line. It'll be a third down and two. Now for Norfolk State with 50 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Good to see Michael Wayne with a catch. He's been quiet today. Be interesting to see if they can get him going in the second half. It'll be a third down and two. Savage in the backfield. Three to out, wide outs to the near side. One to the far. That's Michael Haney. As Carter again surveys the defense. Clock moving at 28 seconds. Again, Fam, you showing blitz. Carter rolls right side. Avoids one tackle. And still on his feet as he gets taken down from behind, but he picks up the first down at the 26 yard line. Well, Houdiniak by Pootie Carter gets the first down there, bro. However, it gets done. It'll be a first down for Norfolk State at the 26 yard line, and it'll probably be the final play of quarter number three. And the Spartans now will move to the far end of the field with the football and a first down and 10 as we get set. For the fourth quarter, 23-21 is your Media score. Timeout. Florida and m leading Norfolk State by two. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. What would you like the power to do? We are back here at Dick Price Stadium. 23-21 is your score. Bam, you with a two-point lead. Norfolk State with a football and a first down. Here to start the fourth quarter is Carter. Comes out in the shotgun. He hand, he keeps it. Pass is going to be complete out to McElhaney on a bubble screen. He gets hit as soon as he catches the football. Might have lost a yard on the play. It'll be a second down for Norfolk State. Good fake by Carter. Just wasn't able to get McElhaney 
an opportunity to get open on that one. As the Spartans will make some subs here. And a second down, and they give him credit back to the line of scrimmage. A second down and 10. Carter awaiting the, the play with seven on the play clock. Bunch formation to the near side. One wide receiver to the far side. Carter drops back to pass with time. Now runs out of it. Still on his feet and throws the ball away. Looking in the direction of Justin Smith. And there was a receiver in the area. That was Smith. As the official was ready to throw the flag for intentional grounding. But I think the Spartans will dodge it here. It'll be a third down and 10. There's no foul on the play for intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area. Third down. We'll bring up a third down situation for the Spartans. A third down and 10. That time the Rattlers brought more pressure on Carter. He wasn't able to get away. He did throw it away, but it was incomplete. Third down and 10 as Carter will have Johnson to his right. Pam Mew playing around the sticks, only rushing three here. Carter with time. Looking downfield behind DK James, but it goes through his hands. And he had a wide open Ellington in the middle of the field. Would have had a first down, and the Spartans will have to punt. Yeah, Ellington could have probably still been running. He was open right around midfield. But again, Carter was being pressured, so he had to get rid of it quickly, and he was doing an incomplete pass. And we'll see Ryan Richter for the first time here in the fourth quarter. And Zenday Ray stands at the FAMU 34-yard line. Richter gets the punt away, and it's short, and Ray will call for a fair catch at the 39-yard line, and that's where FAMU will start this drive. And we'll keep play going here. As the Spartans defensively are going to have to make another stop here, trailing by 2, 23-21. Yeah, they're going to have to stop Stanley. Stanley, again, has been doing a lot of quick quick passes, quick screens to his favorite receiver, Smith. So the Spartans are just going to have to maybe play tighter coverage on the on the wide receivers. Four wide outs on the formation, two split to either side. Bonnet in the backfield with Stanley to his left. As Smith comes in motion to the near side, Stanley quickly will dump it off to Smith. Smith. Gets about five yards on the play, maybe six out to the 45-yard line. And that's been their M.O. so far in this game. Stanley to Smith for a quick five, what, six yards on that play. Chavis makes the stop for the Spartans. It'll be a second down and four for Florida and m Clock moving with 13.35 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Stanley drops back to pass, looking down the field. Pass is going to be complete inside of Norfolk State territory. Nice job there. Kamari Young running up the seam. Almost had that ball knocked away at the last minute by Nyree Quinley, but he was a tad bit too late. And that's Stanley's first pass in a long time downfield, Ross. Usually they're quick screens, but that time he went downfield with the pass. Bam, you quickly in the Norfolk State territory with the first down and 10 at the Norfolk State 37. Stanley bunch formation to the top of the formation. One wide receiver to the near side. Stanley, again, quickly out in the flat. Pass is complete out to Williams, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Tighter coverage that time on the receiver. As the Rattlers were still able to complete it. It'll be a second down and four now for Florida and m at the Norfolk State 31-yard line with 12.45 left to go here in quarter number four. Stanley in the shotgun. Bonnet to his right. It's going to be a quick pass again out to Williams. Williams makes the reception, picks up the first down and more. Steps inside at the 15-yard line before he slung down. Same plays, Ross. Just different sides, different receivers as well. Just quick passes by Stanley to his receivers. Again, the cushion being provided by the DBs. Stanley just taking what the DB gives him. That's going to be... A first down for Florida and m at the 13-yard line. 
as the handoff will go to Bonnet this time. He tries to get the edge, and he gets to the edge. It looks like he'll have enough for the first down inside the 10-yard line to the three. It'll be a first down to go for Florida and m you know, That time it was a run, and Bonnet, using his speed, gets outside. <laughs> Wasn't able to get in the end zone, but he does get it at the three. As again, Florida and m wants to go quickly. Handoff goes to Bonnet. He waits behind the line of scrimmage, and he's hit hard by Bobby Price. No gain there as a Rattler lost the helmet. It'll be second down and goal for FAMU. So huge at the Spartans to stop them here and hold them to a field goal attempt. 269 yards passing for Ryan Stanley today with one touchdown. Bonnet with 96 yards rushing today on 15 attempts. He's going to have a stoppage of play. It's going to be second down. A second down play is the yard marker was wrong. We had third down. It will be second down for Florida and m Ball spotted at the three-yard line. Stanley in the shotgun. Jennings checks in. He has a rushing touchdown. He's a bigger back here. He stands to the right of... Stanley as the handoff will go to Jennings. Jennings rushing left side. Gets down to the goal line. Doesn't get in. Nice job there by the Spartans stack, stacking him up at the one. He picked up two. Be a third down and goal. And we're going to have a flag thrown. As it looked like Dixon's helmet was ripped off. And it might go against Florida AM. Dixon on the field in pain and his helmet was on now is off and he's laying down on the field couldn't really see what happened from here but Dixon like you said is definitely in pain laying down and it's going to be after the play and as coach Scott comes to check on Dixon the flag was thrown around the one yard line and again he's laying on the field again helmet came off late in the play as he's up on his feet we'll see what the flag is going to be thrown for after the play unsportsmanlike conduct offense number 23 15 yard penalty the down counts third down so which would have been a third and goal from the one is now going to be a third and goal from the 16 yard line with 11 08 left to go as Jennings was a guilty party there you saw him around the goal line just stacked up and this will make it a third down and goal from the 16 yard line and Stanley will have Bonnet to his left three wide receivers to the far side one to the near side as Manigo forced Stanley in the shotgun. Four down linemen as Stanley rolls out. Pass is going to be complete at the goal line. And it's actually incomplete. Nice hit late there by Quinterly and Bobby Price. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Double team there by Price and Quinterly to, to jar that ball loose. And that was the same play. Timeout on the field for an injured player. As Smith was the intended receiver, that was the same play that they scored a touchdown on to win the game against Southern last week. It was just a fake out for Smith and then he went towards the goal post and Bobby Price did a good job of laying a hit on him as he lunged out for the football and we'll see a field goal opportunity for FAMU. That's a huge, huge loss if, if Williams can't return. Is he still, I mean, I'm sorry, Smith. And he's getting up slowly. As the ball was jarred loose nicely. Nice hit there by Bobby Price. Didn't lower his shoulder. It didn't leave with his helmet. Did a good job there of making a legal hit at the goal line. So again, penalties always come back to bite you. And that time it came back to bite the Rattlers on that 15 yard unsportsmanlike to push them back. Now they have to go for a field goal attempt here. 
It will be fourth down, and we'll see what Willie Simmons decides to do as his offense still on the field. And we'll see the field goal unit come out for Florida and m Again, the situation where the Spartans' defense bows up late with 10.52 left to go here in the fourth quarter, trailing by two. I lead this time from 30... Three yards out in the left hash. He's a perfect two for two here today. Out of the hole of Fadul. The snap is good and it's going to be a fake. And throwing the ball is going to be incomplete. Deshaun Dixon was there and the Spartans dodged a bullet. Fadul had a man open, but the quick pressure in his face in the Spartans. Dodge a bullet there with 10 49 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Timeout will be taken on the field. FanView leading Norfolk State 23 21. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. Yeah. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium 23 21 is your score. FanView leading Norfolk State by two as the Spartans back to the line of scrimmage after the fake field goal attempt by FanView and the Spartans see blitz as. The handoff goes to Hewlett. Hewlett avoids one tackle and picks up a yard on the play out to the 16-yard line before he's swallowed up by a host of defenders from FAMU. It will be a second down and nine for Norfolk State. Again, Spartans showing different looks at the back in the, in the running back position with Johnson, Hewlett, and Savage all getting carried. That time Hewlett only got one yard on that carry. As it's a second down and nine now for Norfolk State. Four wide outs as Johnson moves in motion. Play action to Johnson. The pass is going to be complete out to Hewlett. Hewlett looking for a block. Can't get one. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about it. Yeah, Rattlers all over that play. They read it the whole way. Saw screen. Went over and made their play. And now the Spartans are in a third and long situation. As Carter. Again, with the pressure coming from FAMU, we'll have a third down and nine. He's done a good job of making some things happen as FAMU late getting the man on. Carter looks out, and the flat pass is going to be complete out to Justin Smith, and Smith will have enough for the first down. Tight coverage there on the play from Florida A&M's Eric Smith, but you see the good hands of Justin Smith make the reception, and it's a first down at the 28-yard line. Well, good hands, Ross, and also Smith uses 6'2", 180-pound frame to shield off the defender and get that catch and get the first down and move the sticks for the Spartans. And that time, Florida A&M dropped eight in coverage, only rushed three with 9'10 left to go in the fourth quarter, and the Spartans beat it as Carter. Quick drop, and the pass is going to be complete out to Smith. Smith had a tough time catching it, but corrals it, and then he's tackled by... Florida a &M. Tim Williams there for that first down play. The Spartans pick up six. It'll be a second down and four. Actually, that was Isaiah Land comes up and makes the stop. Carter with three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Spartans trailing by two. As again, FAMU showing blitzes. Carter has to corral the high snap. And that's going to drop the Spartans back for a loss of about six. It'll be a second down and long. Tough play that time for the Spartans. Had a good, a lot of momentum going. And just plays like that just kill your drive and your momentum. And this is going to be a loss of seven on the play. It'll be a third down and 17 for Norfolk State. As Carter sends a man in motion, play action, looking downfield, has time, pass is going to be thrown behind his intended receiver, intercepted. And FAMU will bring it back inside the 10-yard line and taking it out. A bounds from Florida and m was number 24. That's Cortez Reed with the interception. We're going to have a flag thrown, though. At around the 23-yard line. It's a flag thrown, but we'll see if it came after the interception or before. We'll see what the flag is is for. Anyway. 
after the interception. Block in the back. Return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And legal block in the back will push the ball back to the 34 yard line with 7.45 left to go here in quarter number four. And the FAMU offense will be back out on the field after the turnover. That's the first turnover of the night for either team. A costly one comes late in the game. 7.45 left in the game. Looks like the ball was tipped. Not sure. I think maybe the defender or maybe the receiver of the Spartans. Got a piece of it, but nonetheless picked off by the Rattlers, and they have it first and 10 at 35. As Bonnet checks in at the tailback, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As the handoff will go to Bonnet, trying to cut it back inside. The Spartans were ready for that one and drive him back. As he got back to the line of scrimmage and pushing and shoving after the play, it will be a second down and 10 for FAMU. See the Spartans going for that ball to rip it out. And that pass looked like it was tipped by Justin Smith, the intended receiver as it was thrown just behind him, right into the hair, and air and, and carried up high enough for the interception from Reed. It'll be a second down and eight for FAMU as the ball will be spotted at the 34-yard line. Stanley sends two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Play action for Stanley. Pressure coming. Pass is going to be complete to Zende Ray as he beat his man in coverage and... He slung down to the 15-yard line by Bobby Price. It'll be a first down for the Rattlers. Decent pressure that time by the Spartans, but Stanley stayed in the pocket, found an open receiver, and got the first down. 6.50 left to go here in quarter number four. Fam, you trying to capitalize off of the first turnover of the night for either team. As Stanley has Bonnet to his right, leading 23-21. Ray in motion. A handoff goes to Bonnet. Bonnet explodes to the line of scrimmage. Stays on his feet as he gets inside the 10. He's pushed forward to the 6-yard line. He'll have enough maybe for... Actually, they'll say he's about yard shot of the first down. With the clock moving 6-15 left to go here in quarter number 4. It'll be a second down and 1. Bonnet over 100 yards today. Rushing for the Rattlers. He's got 17 carries for 105. As the ball spotted at the six, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. It's Manigo matched up man to man as Ali goes in motion. Handoff goes to Bonnet in between the tackles, trying to get to the yard line to make. And I don't know if he got it. He'll be about a yard shot of the first down. It'll be a third down and one for the Rattlers. Myers in on the stop. Also, Bobby Price. Huge third down is an understatement here. Third and one for the yeah. Rattlers. And they'll bring in the bigger back. And Norfolk State will call a timeout as Jennings was checking timeout. in. It'll be a third down and one with 526 left to go here the in the fourth Media quarter. Timeout. And we'll take that timeout with them. The Rattlers leading by two, 23-21 as we take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Networks. Third down and one for Florida and M. 526 left to go here in the fourth quarter at the Norfolk State six yard line. Stanley with Jennings to his right sends Ray in motion. The handoff goes to Jennings. Jennings trying to power his way to the five, and he, if he does get it, it's not by much, and they're going to say he lost the yard on the play. They'll bring up a fourth down situation, and let's see what Coach decides to do. At that time. The Rattlers went with a big package. And they came up a little short there, Ross. Clock moving under five minutes to go now here in quarter number four. Fourth down and one at the six-yard line. And Simmons will keep his offense on the field. Stanley will be in the shotgun. He has Jennings to his right. Two wide receivers to the near side. Stanley sends Ray in motion. Again, the handoff goes to Jennings, rushing left side, and he gets to the end zone. Fourth down and one produces six, and the Spartans now trail by 29-21. Caught the Spartans a little misdirection, somebody in motion, confused a little bit. You have all your eyes on that motion, man, and they get the touchdown up the middle. That's the second touchdown of the night for Jennings. And there's going to be a conversation. 
now is it's an eight point lead and it looks like Bam you will take a timeout. I don't know if they were going to think about going for two there. First charge time out. Four thirty-six left to go. Thirty seconds. Really didn't make sense there. Yeah, you're up eight, so the Spartans will have to score and get a two-point conversion to even tie the ball game. One point, a field goal makes it a two-possession ball right. game there. So we'll look at it and. Just running through an arm tackle there for Florida and was Jennings as Quinterly was there on the plate, just couldn't make the stop. And the offense and actually the field goal unit will stay on as Fadul will hold. Ali will look to make it a nine point lead as the score is now 29-21. Low snap, the kick is up high and it's blocked. Let's see if it gets through. And it does. The kick was blocked, but it sneaks through and it's a nine point ball game in favor of FAMU. That's why they say these games are a game of inches. A couple of inches over to the, to the left and it would have fell short, but nonetheless, nine point lead for the Rattlers here going uh, 436 left in the game. And the Spartans still with time here. We'll have to strike quickly as Bam you after the interception comes up with the touchdown that's a big score therefore the Rattlers to make it a nine-point ball game 30 to 21 Johnson back deep along with Talbert for the Spartans as we'll see Julius Duarte come out to kick off Great time for a, a big kickoff return here, Ross. Could use one here. The Spartans with two timeouts remaining. He took a timeout there on that third down. Got the stop. But a fourth down rush from six yards out for Jennings. His second six-yard touchdown run of the day. And the Spartans now trail by nine as Kevin Johnson looks for a return, gets a big block, gets out past the 30, and he's taken down at the 33-yard line. And the Spartans will come out offensively at the 33 as Allen for FAMU makes the stop. And the Spartans will have to go to 67 yards here for a score. Or if they can score, if they can get a quick field goal, maybe an onside kick to try to get back into the, you need two scores Trailing by nine right. as Carter comes out. Two wide receivers to the top of the formation, one to the nearest. Carter drops back the pass. Pass is going to be complete. Also McFarlane, the tight end, coming up and making the stop for Florida and them was cornerback Eric Smith at the 37-yard line, a pickup of five as the Spartans move quickly. For McFarlane, that's his first catch. It's a second down and six as Carter drops back the pass again. Looking over the middle, pass is going to be incomplete. Looking for James. James looking for a flag. Can't get it. Ball will be spotted at the 37. Again. It's a third down and six. 407 left to go. Clock stop. Carter. Drops back the pass. Pass is going to be knocked away. And it'll bring up fourth down. And DK James looking for another flag. Can't get it there. He was looking for the slant. He would have had the first down. But the coverage on the play was tight and good there by Elijah Richardson. Sparks obviously will stay on the field here on the fourth down. Fourth down and six. Carter looks to the sideline, waits the snap, drops the snap, steps up, gets hit in the backfield. And it'll be a turnover on downs. And I don't know if Carter took his eye off the ball, but just dropped the snap. 
And the ball will be spotted at the 32-yard line for Florida A&M of Norfolk State. Yeah, that could have been the case. Looking downfield and not keeping your eye on the, on the snap. And turns over. Turn, turn over on downs now for the, uh, for the Spartans. And Norfolk State with two timeouts remaining. Again on defense, a quick four and out. And Stanley comes back out onto the field. Bonded in the backfield. He's over 100 yards. As chain crew has to be reset. As Bonnet stays in the backfield with Stanley with four wide outs in the formation, two split to either side. Man in motion as it's handoff to Bonnet. Bonnet gets to the 30 yard line, a pickup of two. Tyree Givers Wilson there on the stop. Kyrie Speller as well. And again, the Spartans will probably will let this clock roll down to the maybe the 310 mark. There's 20 seconds on. Two timeouts remaining. They'll probably call their timeouts if they can get a stop here on second and third down. Okay, with two timeouts. Yeah, you definitely want to space them out, but the Rattlers are in no hurry on this offensive side. Bonded in the backfield with Stanley as a man in motion. Again, it's going to be a keeper by Stanley. He avoids one tackle, gets taken down in the backfield for a loss of one. Nice job there. Tavian Blackwell is staying at home. And that's the timeout taken by Norfolk State with 3.07 left. Timeout, Norfolk State. Second charge timeout of the half. Media timeout. We'll take that timeout with them. It's a nine-point lead, 30-21 to 21 in favor of Florida A&M. We'll take this break on the MEAC Digital and NSU Sports Network. What would you like the power to do? Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 307 left, a third down and 10 for Florida A&M. Bonded in the backfield as Ray goes in motion for Stanley. Stanley will hand it off to Bonnet. He's rushing left side. See if the Spartans can get him to get out of bounds, and they do, and they save a timeout as well. And it'll bring up a fourth down situation. Ball be spotted. And the timeout will be taken by Norfolk State. That's the final timeout. With 2.57 left. Clock automatically stops with two minutes left. It's 2.57 left. And the ball will be spotted at the 29-yard line. It'll be a third, it'll be a fourth down, and we'll say seven from here. Let's see what Coach Simmons does. Here, I mean, uh, you would think he would go for the field goal, but maybe he just goes. Timeout, Norfolk State. It's their third and final timeout. Please, rec please reset the game clock to three minutes, one second. So they'll put four seconds back on the clock. And that's when Bonnet went out of bounds. Thank you. That's when Bonnet went out of bounds. And again, if you're Norfolk State, uh, you've seen Ali kick a 52-yarder here today. So we'll probably see. I mean, if you had a place in the field, though, if you're fam, you, you can go for it as well. It doesn't hurt you. Yeah, Spartans I mean, still need two scores. Yeah, I mean, they, then they can use more clock if they go for it and force Norfolk State to uh, call them their last time out. And Stanley will come back onto the field. It'll be a fourth down and seven. And Bonnet will be in the backfield. This could essentially be the game because the Spartans do not have a timeout remaining. And Stanley will see... Timeout, Florida A&M. Second charge timeout of the half. A timeout called by Florida A&M. Maybe they'll discuss what they're going <laughs> to get more in depth of what they want to do here on this fourth down. Maybe they didn't get the look that they wanted. Coming out of the timeout for Norfolk State defensively. And again, definitely in field goal range. The wind blowing in the face, maybe, of Ali. Again, 
doesn't hurt anything for keeping the offense on the field. With a two possession lead now, 30 to 21. And that's what they'll do, Ross. We're going to keep the offense on the field. As the Spartans will see four wideouts in the formation, including the tight end. Lined up in the slot to the near side, Kamari Young. Spartans will play man defense as Young moves to the far side of the field. Rolling out is Stanley. Stanley looking out in the flat pass is going to be complete, but not enough for the first down. Good coverage there on the outside by the Spartans. Ray caught the pass, but a nice tackle in the open field. There by Rashard Russell. And Norfolk State gets the football back with 2.56 remaining, trailing by nine. It was great press man coverage by Russell just to make sure that the receiver did not go any any further than it, any when he caught the ball. And now FAMU will play off the ball a little bit defensively as Norfolk State will come out with three wide outs. Savage in the backfield. Carter drops back the pass, looking downfield, steps up in the pocket, will run, and then run backwards. Gets to the line of scrimmage. Back to the original line of scrimmage, not much more than that. Yeah. Carter trying to go downfield and just didn't have anybody to throw it to and just took the sack. They give him credit of one. There's Carter drops back to pass. And we're going to have a stoppage of play. A false start being called against Norfolk State. False start. Offense. Number 15. Five yard penalty. Second down. DK James, a guilty party. He hasn't had a reception since the first half here today. Carter with 218 yards passing on 24 of 33. One interception today. He's been sacked once. That's Carter. The second down and 15. Drops back to pass. With time, pass is going to be incomplete. I was looking for James. Then he and James run on the same page. I like, I like the way they were incorporating James in the first half. It just hasn't been able to get going in the second half. There's no catches in the second half, Ross. As the Spartans now have a third down in 15 with 2.13 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Carter again drops back to pass with time. Now times runs out. As he looks down the field, pass is going to be complete out to Ellington. Great catch there by Ellington. He threw it up, gave his big receiver a chance out to the 44-yard line. It'll be a first down there. A great grab by the 6'6 receiver. He's the only one that could go there. Got it on the high point and pulled it down. Nice job there as the Spartans move quickly after the first down. Carter drops back to pass. Pass is going to be complete out to Williams. Actually incomplete. As it will be a second down now and 10 as Williams got the ball knocked away from him. That'll bring up a second down and 10 with 154 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Five receptions now for 77 yards for Ellington. And again, FAMU playing around 20 yards or 15 yards off the ball here for their three safeties. As Carter will drop back the pass. Looking downfield, pass is going to be incomplete. Looking for Talbert. Again, small windows there to throw as the linebackers are around 10 yards deep and the second line of defensive safeties are playing around 20 yards deep. Right, Roger, right. That, that tight window to get that pass in those creases to get those receivers the ball. Really tight for Carter to get Talbert to pass that time. Third down now for Carter. Two wide receivers at to the top of the formation, one to the, two to the near side. As Carter drops back the pass with time, now rolls out of the pocket. Pass is going to be incomplete. Throws it short. Pass is intended for Talbert on the drag. So Carter got hit as he threw it. Not much time to get the passes out, uh, out of his hands right now with all the pressure that uh, FAMU's is putting on Carter. 146 remaining here in the fourth quarter. It'll bring up a fourth down and 10. Carter will look towards the sidelines. As he will send two wide receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near side. Again, 
for Carter. They'll drop eight. Carter rolls right. Looking downfield. Has a man. That's Justin Smith. If he pulls this down, that's a heck of a catch. And he does with a man blanketed all over him. He gets down to the FAMU 32 with 139 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Oh, great catch by Smith. And we remember when he played Virginia State here, he had a couple of great catches down the sideline. That was another great catch by Smith. Coverage on the play by Troy Hilton. And you couldn't ask a defensive back to cover it any better than that. Just a better catch there by Justin Smith quickly. Carter drops back to pass, looking downfield. Pass is going to be complete out to McFarland. He'll pick up the first down inside the 20. And gets taken down at the 16-yard line. And we're going to have some pushing and shoving. Talbert, the freshman, pushing and shoving there as the Spartans have a first down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Clock moving with 125 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And the timeout's going to be taken by FAMU. Florida and m Good Third job. Final timeout of the half. Good job there by seconds. the tight end. McFarland of making a play down the field. A tough catch and then a tough finish as he got pulled down yeah. by shoulder pads. And, again, you have to credit on this drive, Juwan Carter making some plays down the field. He's got 283 yards passing today, 27 of 40. Both quarterbacks with 27 completions on the night. Smith with five catches, 78 yards. Five catches of 77 for Ellington. James, six catches, 61. As Juwan Carter has hit eight receivers here today. They definitely spread the well. And his poise in this, in this last drive, taking some hits, still getting the ball down the field. Just like that last one, he, he just threw to McFarland, the tight end. Dorvik State inside the red zone after a beautiful catch by Justin Smith. And then Carter stepping up in the pocket. And McFarland doing a good job of moving with his quarterback and making a play. And that's all you can that's all you can do if your quarterback if your quarterback is scrambling, you have to make yourself available and McFarland did a good job of doing so. Absolutely. You read the defense, you see where your quarterback's going and you get in the open area, and that's what McFarland did. Took a nasty spill there though at the end. Carter will empty the backfield. Four wide receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near. Carter awaits the snap. Drops back to pass. Rolling right. Pressure coming. Carter avoids one tackle. Gets pushed out of bounds. And we're going to have a hold in around the 24 yard line. And also an injury on the play for Florida AM. Hands to Carter's helmet area. I'm not sure if it was a face mask or not, but we'll see what they call here. And there's an injured Rattler on the field. Holding. Offense. Number 77. 10-yard penalty. First down. Kenneth Kirby, the guilty party there. Bam, you will host North Carolina Central next week. The Spartans will be back here at home to take on North Carolina A&T. So, both teams with tough roads to go. As we knew, this would be a tough stretch for Norfolk State. They've done a good job to this far. This far, getting to a 30-21 ball game, had a 21-20 lead. Fam, you <laughs> scored nine straight points and again capitalized off the turnover to get the last touchdown to make it a nine point ball game. Excuse me, a 10 point ball game. A nine point ball game. I'm sorry, 30 to 21. They scored the last 10 points, excuse me. And again, if you're Norfolk State, still a lot of time left, 117. Maybe not a lot of time left, but you still have some time left. As long as you have time left, you have an opportunity. So they, they can score here quick and maybe get an onside kick. As Carter will be backed up to the 26-yard line. Drives back to pass. Pressure coming. He lowers it and looks off of Talbert. Talbert 
Had a step on his man. That was a perfectly thrown football. And Talbert couldn't bring it in as it went straight through his hands. You're right, Ross. Perfectly timed pass. Talbert had his, had his defender beat, just couldn't pull it down in the end zone. So the Spartans will have a second down and 20. Ball spotted the 26-yard line. With 113 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, Fam you crowding the line of scrimmage. Johnson lined up in the slot to the near side. Carter steps up in the pocket, looks downfield, looks for Anthony Williams. What a catch in the end zone for Williams. Again, pressure coming on Carter as he was hit late. But the Spartans now trail 30 to 27, 108 left to go. Here in the fourth quarter. I talked about his poise, Ross, and Carter stepped up in the pocket, knew he was going to get hit, delivered a strike down the field for a touchdown. He's 20-42. Josh Jones in, looking to make it a two-point ball game with 108 left to go. Out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. Snap is good. The kick is up. It's high enough on the way. It's up and good. And the Spartans now trail by two, 30 to, 20, 30 to 28. Well, you had one special teams play here. Now you have to have the biggest special teams play of the game, and that's possibly get an onside kick here, as I'm sure the Spartans will go for that. And if you're Coach, if you're coach Scott, you have to love those two passes with pressure coming in the by Juwan Carter. As Talbert just missed one, and then Anthony Williams, the tight end, just ran up the seam oh, yeah. and beat two defenders. You never <laughs> love to see a tight end beat two defenders down the field. Oh, absolutely, Ross. You definitely have to love that. The poise, again, with, by Carter. He took a couple shots on that drive, and on a touchdown pass, he took a, a huge shot, but delivered a strike to Williams, as you said, up the seam for six. And... Mm -hmm. The hands team will be on the field now for Norfolk State. Bobby Price, Nigel Chavis, DK James, Justin Smith will be on the field for Norfolk State. And again, 108 left to go, two point ball game. Josh Nardone. will get it away. And it's going to be a squibber, and it's going to go out of bounds. Had a chance, never got the big hop. Nardone didn't get the big hop there, and the ball will go out of bounds. It will be a flag thrown. This ball goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Illegal kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Yeah, Ross didn't get the, ball, the bounce they would like. Doesn't look like they... Uh were set up the way they wanted to be either, but it went out of bounds anyway. It wasn't 10 yards, so they're going to the Rattlers get the ball at midfield. And it looks like Stanley will take a knee here. They're ready for play. Stanley takes a knee, and he'll have to do that one more time. The ball will be spotted at the 45-yard line. Stanley. Wait. Anytime after the 47 second mark, he can take the snap and the ball clock goes right under 37 now and he will take the snap and that will do it. Your final score will be FAMU 30, Norfolk State 28 here from Dick Price Stadium and the MEAC opener for both squads. As FAMU, a couple more plays in the second half than the Spartans. As we look at this game as a whole, uh, Wu Bay, Norfolk State, started off good, uh, scored a first, Bam you answered. Again, the Spartans then went out and scored late in the second quarter. Bam you answered and then scored a, a field goal to go up 17 
to 14 at the break. Norfolk State again gave up a field goal at the end of the. Then it was straight from the got on the board. What was a ball game? Did two balls damn you here today? And again, you look at the ball game, Norfolk State had its opportunities. And you have to credit FAMU for making some plays down the straights. Oh, absolutely. It was definitely a great game. And, you know, it was turnover free until the until the end. And, you know, the team they had the turnover, you know, usually the team that has the least amount of turnovers uh, wins the game. And that's what happened. And, you know, the, the Spartans had that late turnover. And that was uh, the key point of the game in the fourth quarter. Ryan Stanley, 27 of 37, 293 and a touchdown. Bishop Bonnet, 20 carries, 109. And Jennings, 8 carries, 29 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Xavier Smith, 12 receptions, 98 yards to lead the way for Florida A&M. Juwan Carter, 28 of 42. He had an interception and a touchdown for 308 here today. Johnson, seven carries, 53 yards, two touchdowns, one touchdown for Gerald Hewlett on the ground. Uh, Anthony Williams, four receptions, 49 yards. He had a touchdown. Justin Smith, five receptions, 78 yards. He led the way for Norfolk State on the defensive side of the football. Fam, you. Ed. Had one sack. Norfolk State didn't. Uh, three pass breakups for Shavai Williams. Two, four. Uh, Bell to lead the way in that category. As Richardson led the way for Florida A&M, he had 10 tackles. 11 tackles for Tyree Givers-Wilson. 10 apiece for Savage and Chavis. And that is a look at your leading tacklers for the ballgame. Your final score, FAMU 30, Norfolk State 28. So for Rube Gabre, I'm Ross Gordon saying so long from Dick Price Stadium where the final score is 30 to 28. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN to our radio audience on Hot 91. We'll be back with more on the post-game show after this break. You're listening and watching Miak Football on the Miak Digital and NSU Sports Network.